Good morning and happy Sabbath to every one of you out there watching and joining us today at Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church, Lagos University. I'm thankful and glad that you all have joined us. And I want you to know, all of you out there who have been putting prayers uh, on the chat, that uh, we have been praying for you. I know I've been praying for you. And I pray that God has answered all your prayers. And if he hasn't answered them yet, you can be sure. They will be answered. Amen. Amen. So happy Sabbath again to all of you out there. Uh, we have a wonderful lesson that we're looking into, to, into this week. Uh, in fact, this entire quarter, it's an amazing lesson. And I know that today, today, if you didn't know uh, about the judgment and when it has started and what it's all about, then I know our panel is going to get us into that information today to help us understand where we are in history. Amen. So this lesson number six already, lesson number six, the hour of his judgment, the hour of his judgment. My, my, we pray that uh, God will give us understanding today. But we have with us as we, uh, before we get into this lesson, we know we have to be taken to heaven. You know, our minds need to be brought to a place where we're relaxed, where we're enjoying the presence of God. And so we have with us today Sister Joy Allen and Dr. Brianna Thornton, who's going to give us wonderful words of life through music. Amen. Amen. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the music as we prepare ourselves for this Sabbath school lesson. And I say right now, as, we, as you're getting ready to do that, call the children together. Call your husband. Call your wife. Call your grandmother, auntie, uncles, and cousins. Call them. Let them sit with you. Uh, in front of your television or wherever you're on your computer, let them sit with you as we enter into God's presence through music. Sister Joy, Dr. Brianna, God bless you. Happy Sabbath. Okay, our first hymn is 476. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. And if some of you have had the morning that I've had, you really need to take the burdens to Calvary. <laughs> Days 
hearts are filled with sorrow and care hearts are lonely and drear burdens are lifted at calvary jesus is very near burdens are lifted at calvary Calvary, Calvary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Cast your care on Jesus today, leave your worry and fear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Troubled soul, the Savior can see every heartache and tear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. Okay, the next hymn is 50. Him 50. Abide with me. Lord, we need you to abide. I need your strength today. <laughs> abide with me, please.
Lord, abide with me. I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no you guys were here in the studio to hear Brother Mark's beautiful bass singing along with me. Have a great Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Allen and Dr. Thornton, for taking us to heaven in preparation for this wonderful lesson that we're about to study today. We want to just remind you all that if you haven't done it already, please make sure that you press like and share. And uh, what's the other word, Adam? Subscribe. Subscribe. There you go. Press <laughs> like, <laughs> press like and share and subscribe that this gospel of, of the kingdom can be given to all the world. Now, I'm happy to just spend this little bit of time with you this morning. But before we uh, get into this lesson, I know we have uh, out of Howard Abbey, uh, just waiting in the wings there to, to, to take us into this lesson. And as you know already, he is the moderator uh, for these lessons. And we pray that God will open your understanding as he brings the word to you this, this morning. But I got, I got one question for our panel this morning. One question. So I'm not going to take over anything. One question. This memory text says, and do this. Knowing the time, that now it's high time to awake out of sleep. High time to awake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. But there is something that came that is in this memory text. I want to just get our panel to, 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 to give us an answer to this. It says, knowing the time. Now my question is, the panel, how do we know what time it is? How do we know what time it is? I'm going to come right over here to the outer old boy first really quickly if he can help us to understand knowing the time. The Bible wants us to know the time. How can we know what time it is? Well, quite, good morning and happy Sabbath to, to you and to, to those in the viewing audience. Um, the Bible explains itself, and it's actually a precursor as to what we're going to get into today. We have been given signs and wonders, as if I could use that terminology, for the understanding. That, um, the Bible says the secret things belong to God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and, and to our children. So God has given us uh, way, way markers, right, in the Bible. And we're going to see that uh, in this study, that God has given us significant evidence to prove in what time it is. Oftentimes, we have devices such as our watches or as our phones that actually tell us what time it is. Mm -hmm. And here we have the uh, Bible, and this lesson is, as it were, our watch, yes, our device to tell us what time it is so we can know exactly where we are in Earth's history. So that, what, that's what I would have to say if, if we could know what time it is. Amen, amen. I couldn't have said it better myself out of old boy, huh? Mm -hmm. The Bible is like a watch. Whenever you want to know what time it is, pick it up, open it up, and read it. Mm -hmm. You'll discover what time it is. Well, I'm going to come quickly to Outer Mark, right there in the middle. Outer Mark, help us to understand, how do we know what time it is? We, we know what time it is by the condition of the world. Um, even the people, I joined this chat, and the people in, in this chat, they know something's up. They know the world's in chaos. They know the banking sector, the economy is in shambles. They know something's about to happen 
and it seems like they're, skir they're skirting around our message. It's like they're, the only thing they're missing is this, the hour of his judgment message. They're, not, they're missing the details, but they know something's up. God wants us to be ready in, at any time in our lives, not just when he's coming, but right now we have to make this decision for Christ. Amen. Amen. That's right. We got to make this decision right now. I mean, after all, the tax doors tell us it's time to awake out of sleep. And so, brothers and sisters, my prayer for us today is that if we haven't uh, been awake, that after today, we will all be awake, just waiting for the bridegroom to come. Well, I'm going to go down to the end really quickly to Dr. Brianna Thornton. I'm going to ask you, sister, mm -hmm. how do we know what time it is? <laughs> well, good morning and happy Sabbath. The first thing that came to my mind when reading this memory text is focusing on that word sleep and coming out of sleep. There's this cantata written by Bach that's called Sleepers Awake, the translation. And that's what comes to my mind, Sleepers Awake. And so God in the Bible warns us also for sleepers to awake. And all of us are at sleep at different times in our lives. And we need each other to be those alarm clocks, referring back to what Elder Allboy was saying. Um, of timekeeping devices and how the Bible is our timekeeping device. Um, but sometimes God also puts people in our lives, circumstances in our lives, um, other situations that are those alarm clocks that will wake us out of that sleep or at least give us a chance to. And if we heed that, like the wise virgins in the parable, um, then we can be prepared for uh, Christ's second coming with everyone, all the other believers as well. Amen, amen. We are hoping to go with everybody else. Mm. So as we all awake today, as we all awake, we're looking forward to taking that journey to heaven. Well, we've got to get right into this lesson. As I said, Elder Eben is waiting, waiting in the back, ready and willing to go. And uh, so we have Elder Allboy is going to give us our uh, opening prayer. Elder Allboy, take us to heaven. Heavenly Father, we now sit and wait for you to open our minds and give us understanding and like the prophet of old, I ask that you will come down and reveal yourself to us that we may be, be able to understand, but not only understand, but apply the things that we will learn today. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you and enjoy this lesson study. Happy Sabbath. And good morning, Logos University. Good morning and blessed Sabbath to each and every one of you. Blessings. Nice to see you, Dr. Brianna. My, my, out of Mark. Yes, sir. Out of old boy. Yes, sir. So morning, you last boy. night. You did, indeed. My, 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 my. Well, we give, give God thanks. And I just want to give a word of clarity uh, before the head out of this church, Hamilton Church, under the leadership of Pastor uh, Steve. Uh, before he leaves, I just want to clarify for you. <laughs> Alder Manny Smith is still the moderator for Lagos University. <laughs> I am just on loan from the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But, but I, I'm just here. He's taking a little break uh, and, and doing his other duties, and then he will be back. And, uh, and so let it be written, <laughs> and so let it be done. Amen, amen. And so we, we want to share with you <laughs> the good news. Listen, everyone, it, this, is, this is the place to be. I, I, I was running a little late, but I picked up two individuals, my neighbors. And one of them, they were walking real slow, real gingery. And uh, he said, man, I got arthritis in my knees. I said, so do I. And then his brother, his brother had shared how he has heart disease and lung disease. And he, he's uh, dialysis and... and, and uh, abdominal problems, and, and 
an issue. We saw the ambulance come pick him up uh, about a month ago. And so what could I but do was to invite them to church, but also to invite them even more, not just to church, but to meet the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, the Bible says in Psalms 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, and he does what? And he heals all our diseases. So I couldn't help but present them to the bomb in Gilead. Last night, out of all boy and I and Pastor Dwayne Burgess, uh, we met with a young lady and her family. And this young lady had a story about the power of God. We showed up for anointing, but God did an experience upon us. And, and out of man, is trying to sneak off, but he wants to know what? And, and, and he'll find out next week. He wants and you want to know, but he'll find out next week. Because next week, everyone, good morning to you, those laying in your beds, driving your cars, there in Africa, there in the Caribbean, there in the United States, in Canada, wherever you are right now listening to Logos University, we are going to have an anointing service right here on Logos University. Someone say amen. amen. Uh, some of them have just been taken off guard, but it has been cleared with the Sabbath school superintendent. And guess what? Pastor David Steed II will be here, and he will be praying over the saints of God and those who know not God, but know about a God that heals. That's all they know. The 11th hour workers are being called in. So what we want to do as we are sharing this message about spreading the gospel, we would like you, come on, Sister Cordell, my sister Cordell, Adventist Risk Management, Delbert Pyramid, the financial vice president of Adventist World Radio. I need you, North American Division General Conference, the Atlantic Union, Bermuda Island. I need you to spread the word on the spread the word on the best internet that we could possibly share the gospel and spread the word. There's going to be anointing service on Logos University. It's only going to be 10, 15 minutes from 9.30 to, to, to uh, 9.45. And we will have a young lady here. She will share her testimony in five minutes about what God has done for her. We want you to tap in on your social media. Grab your phone. Grab your iPad. Go on WhatsApp. Spread the word because there are people with cancer. There are people with diabetes, high blood Blood pressure. There are people that are sick. They are depressed. They are discouraged. They're, they deal with, with stress and anxiety, which keeps them in the house, causes them to have abdominal cramps because they're, they're not eliminating. They're, they're dehydrated because they're not eating. They're hiding in the closet. There is a lot going on, not just in this island, but worldwide. And so we are asking the God to put a restraining order on the devil. Come on now. Put a restraining order on the devil. Push back those evil angels. And we we, allow, we want a breakthrough to come in somebody's life. So I want you deacons, elders, preachers, no matter what denomination, from First Church of God to the Baptist Church, Emmanuel Baptist to, 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 to Anglican to Presbyterian, who passed Pentecostal and definitely the Seventh-day Adventist Church who spreads this revelation message. We want you to go tell somebody next week's Sabbath from 9.30 to 9.45, we, Pastor Steve, will pray. You get the oil that represents the Holy Spirit. You get the oil and you go to your neighbor who's sick. You get the oil. And when he says, lay your hands on the sick and he prays, the Bible says in James chapter five, if anyone's sick, place your hand on them. Put some oil on the forehead. Now don't dump them with oil. This is not no Benny Hinn foolishness. Come on now. This is real stuff. We don't want you to push anybody to the ground. We want you to lay hands on that individual and the power of God during this 11th hour time, during this gospel hour time, God is going to rain down the power of the Holy Spirit and somebody's going to get healed. Yeah. Tell someone in England, spread the good news about this king who is about to come back and he's going to heal somebody. Hey, it could be you or it could be your neighbor. Hey, you heard it loud and clear. It is, listen. Who do, Fran, who do man say that I am? Man, Jesus says, spread the word and tell them about the bomb in Gilead. Mm -hmm. Tell them that Logos University, the panel, Pastor David Steed, tell them that God wants to do something special in their life. Mm -hmm. He wants to heal you. Spread it. 
And then next week, show up, everyone. Come on, show up. We're asking the churches at Sabbath school time, stop their clocks from 9.30 to 9.45. Island-wide, worldwide, it can be done. Channel the big shots. Let them know what has to be done. And I guarantee you that God will step in. And in 15 minutes, Elder Smith, you will see the world be turned upside down with the gospel healing power of Jesus Christ. Would you say amen out there? Hey, would you say amen out there? Amen. Brethren, don't waste my time. I've got good things to do. Would you say amen out there? Amen. All right, now. Well, let's get into the word of God now. It's Logos University. The hour of his judgment has come. And the Bible text says, as Elder Smith, first elder, uh, had read it. And, and I want you to know, he used to be my, head, my elder uh, at the Rockaway <laughs> Church when I was his pastor. That's why I have a little jurisdiction over him. I, I, you know, I, just a little, just a little. But he was my elder. The hour of his judgment has come, but it says, listen, and do this knowing the time that now is high time to wake out of sleep. For now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Brethren, share, share now, knowing the time. What do you mean knowing the time? Tell us right now about this time clock of prophecy. Tell us how God stepped in when the little horn thought he had it all. And how God has revealed himself and revealed to us where we are in this day of time. And I need some of you out there that are wavering. Listen, you played enough games now. Come on now. Let's go. We 11th hour. I saw my uncle Sunday, last week Sunday morning with his suit on. This guy I drink every day. Come on. I saw him with his suit on. Mm. Going to church. His daughter came to visit. I said, how are you doing? She says, hey, my daddy took me and the family to church. He took my yeah. sisters, my other sister. My, come on now. The 11th hour workers are coming in, and Sister White says, the ranks won't be diminished. I mean, in other words, they'll take your place if, you, if we don't sit up and pay attention. Some of you are lingering on. We've been spreading this gospel. Some of you are lingering. You believe that you can have some of the world, have some of the riches. God gave you the riches. Don't get me started. God gave you the riches so you can use the riches to share the gospel and help other people. The position that you have is because God gave it to you. Now, you can lose the position if you're using it for yachts and worldly atmospheres. But I'm going to tell you, if you use it for the gospel of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you. Telling you, you'll hang on to it, and God will bless you even further. Hey, I ain't got no time to play. I'm an old man, got not much time, but I'm sharing with you yeah. the time that I have. My time is up. Alda, who's on first? Yeah. Sunday, Share it now. Sunday. So, the, when you're piggybacking off of what you just said, I, I heard somewhere where it says the best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The second Mama. best time to do it is right now. So, just picking, picking up on what you just said. Mm -hmm. The best time to come into church and accept Christ was many, many years ago when you were young and you could give your service to God. The next best time is right now. Whilst you hear salvation, harden not your heart, so come on in. Jumping in on to Sunday, we're going right into Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. The Bible says, 70 weeks have been decreed for your people and your holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin to make an atonement for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up vision and prophecy and to anoint the, the most holy place. So you are to know and discern that from the issuing a decree to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be, it will be built again with plaza and moat, even in times of distress. Then after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off and have nothing. And the people of the prince who is to come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. And its end will come with a flood. Even to the end, there will be a war. Desolations are determined. And he will make a firm covenant with the many for one week. But in the middle of the week... He will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. And on the wing of abominations will come one who makes desolate, even unto the complete destruction. One that is decreed is poured out on the one who makes desolate. And I want to go into Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. The Bible says, And he said unto me, mm. Unto two thousand and three hundred mm. days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Now, last night, um, Elder 
my wife and I, we was having this, some discussion about the Sabbath school lesson. And in truth be told, this lesson could have been broken over two weeks. Mm -hmm. It is jam-packed with yes. information. Yes. And to try to go through it in, in this hour uh, is going to be a daunting task. But we're going to do our best to get through it. Amen? So beginning with the cleansing of the sanctuary. Well, the first thing that jumped right out at me was this word cleanse. And, and when looking it up in the dictionary, as a verb, it says, make something, especially the skin, thoroughly clean. Now, that's, that's good. We have, we're told to keep ourselves, uh, to wash our bodies and to purify ourselves. That's good. But the second uh, uh, um, definition says, to rid of something unpleasant or undefiling. The third one mm. it says, to free someone from sin or guilt. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. That, that was your praise moment right there. <laughs> to free someone from sin or guilt. Now as a noun, the word cleanse means to pro a process or period of time during which a person attempts to rid the body of substances regarded as toxic or unhealthy, typically by consuming only water or other liquids. I want to go back to that one where it talks about freeing someone from sin and guilt. It says, the, Bi the Bible says again, until 2,300 days, then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. Okay, well, what sanctuary are we talking about? Mm. Well, we have two sanctuaries. There's the earthly sanctuary of the Old Testament, and, and, and then we have the New Testament, uh, um, the new the, the sanctuary of where Jesus Christ now resides and, and intercedes on our behalf. Well, the earthly was set up to mimic what was going to take place in the heavenly. So here we see the cleansing of the sanctuary, the earthly sanctuary, occurred on the Day of Atonement, or also known as Yom Kippur. And during this process, there were two goats, and I, and I don't have time to go through the whole explanation of it all, but the two goats were set aside. One was to be the, the goat or the goat for the Lord, and the, the second was the scapegoat. And during this time, we were, the, 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 the nation came together and they were encouraged to, to purify themselves and afflict themselves. And as the panel will get into those parts of the lesson uh, of this as we go on. But I want to focus on these two goats. One was the Lord's goat, which was mm. slain. And the blood of that animal was taken and carried in into the sanctuary, into the, to the holy place. And even went as far as into the most holy place. But the high priest is something very, very significant that we cannot overlook. Mm -hmm. You see, the high priest out there, he took that blood mm -hmm. and he sprinkled it on the ground and he would sprinkle it on the altar. And he, he went into the most holy place, sprinkling the blood and sprinkling it on the mercy seat and on the covenant, which is significant. Mm -hmm. The blood yes. covered the high priest. Mm. And, and then as he came out, as he came out, signifying that the sanctuary was now cleansed. He then took the sins and he laid his, both his hands on the scapegoat, which would now transfer the sins of the nation onto this animal, this live animal. And then the, uh, 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 a priest was, would, would, would uh, guide this animal out into the wilderness where he was to run and to die. Okay, what does this all mean? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> you see, to be cleansed, it's this Hebrew word, which is sadak, to be just, to be righteous. You see, the cleansing of the heavenly sanctuary comprehends the entire work of final judgment, beginning with the investigative phase and ending with the executive phase, which results in the permanent eradication of sin from the universe. Who is the scapegoat? Oh, oh you see, the goat that was the Lord's goat represents Jesus Christ. There's no more killing of animals because Jesus died. The ultimate sacrifice was made signifying that Jesus would pay it all yeah. or had paid it all on the cross. That was the Lord's goat. But then there's coming a time when the scapegoat, the one where sin originated, will be his, will be, the, the sins will be placed on the scapegoat. The Bible tells us out that uh, uh, I saw an angel come down with a chain and he bound the devil Mama. for a thousand years. That was his scapegoat. 
Why? Because there was nobody to, 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 to tempt. There was nobody that he could afflict on and cause them to, to, to transgress God's law. That was the scapegoat. The devil will be bound for a thousand years, but it gets better. It gets better. Jesus now stands in the most holy place, interceding for our, on our behalf. He presents himself as the Lord's goat. The one, the blood, his blood was the very one that sacrificed for you and I, brothers and sisters. That was the lamb of God. And I like how Patriarchs and Prophets says it's important truths concerning the atonement were taught the people by this yearly service. In the sin offerings presented during the year, a substitute had been accepted in the sinner's stead. Of course, that sinner uh, uh, was Jesus Christ. The innocent blood that was shed, the, the goat that, went, that was slain, the blood that was uh, um, presented to the most holy place, that was innocent blood. The goat, he, he didn't do nothing wrong. He didn't do nothing wrong. The same thing with Jesus Christ. He came as innocent blood and he mm. was slain on our behalf. But then, in great controversy, it says, the scapegoat was sent away in a land not inhibited, never to come back again into the congregation of Israel. So will Satan, that rascal that has mm. been causing trouble mm. since the beginning of time, he will be banished yes. from the presence of God and his people, and he will be blotted out from existence. <laughs> Come on now. That's exciting. That's gospel. That's good news. He will be blotted yes, out. Yes, yes, no yes. more arthritis no out of. No more arthritis. Good huh? No on. more aneurysms. No more uh, dilabating diabetes. No more heart disease. No more death, brothers and sisters. My mind. Why? Because the scapegoat will be blotted out in that final destruction for sin and sinners. Oh, what a day I'm looking forward yes, to. Sir. I'm looking forward to that day when I can be the one to say, oh yeah, you are going to get yours. Yes. You've made me to suffer in sin. And now, my brother, you are due your just reward. Oh, what a day. But we have a choice to make, brothers and sisters. We have a choice today. You hear the gospel. You hear the good news today while you have breath. Harden not your heart because a day is coming when the final judgment will be made. Where will you stand? Will you stand on the sea of glass or will you say rocks? Hide us from the one that is coming. Hide us. What will you do, brothers and sisters? The day of redemption is drawing nigh. My, my. He still has another minute. <laughs> Everyone, I, I tell you, it, it, I'm sure that uh, you can tell that we are excited uh, that Jesus is coming soon. Yes, sir. Our, our good out old boy is here perspiring, Woo. and he wanna, don't want to take that fancy <laughs> handkerchief out of his jacket. <laughs> You're going to have to take that fancy handkerchief out of your jacket and cool down, sir. <laughs> Listen, everyone, the message is very clear. Jesus became sin so that we can have his righteousness. The sins of many, of all, have been transferred onto Jesus so that we can have eternal life. What I think about this, what I think about all of this, is that Thank you. here it is, Daniel was held in captivity. Mm. He was living a good life in Israel, then the unexpected happened. Sometimes unexpected things do happen. We get taken off guard with the doctor's report, loss of job, whatever it is. We get taken off guard. We get disappointed. Daniel goes into captivity. He passes the test. And after he passes the test, in Daniel chapter 2, God gave him a vision. Listen, folks. Sometimes you may feel captive in a situation. Daniel was given the vision for the salvation of the world. Sometimes things could look very grim. Things could look very disappointing. But you know, as we learned last night, sometimes it's in the tough times that we can appreciate the good times when God gives us a breakthrough. Daniel got a breakthrough, and I'm telling you, God has a breakthrough for you. See the story of Daniel as an example and a hope to you. That, that, that this, this, this lesson 
the gospel is a reminder when things don't look too good that God will present himself and reveal himself for your salvation and then for the salvation of billions. What a joy Daniel must have experienced. Elder Mark. Um, Monday's lesson. Monday's lesson, the title is The 2300 Days and the End Time. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I wrestled with this subject. How do you explain the 2300 day prophecy and the end time in two minutes? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Mercy. <laughs> if, if, Dan, if Daniel had a problem understanding the 23 day 100 prophecy, imagine us trying to understand it in this short period of time. Um, what I want you to do also, I want you to Google the 23 day 100 prophecy. Google the image and you'll see the time frame to help you understand. Let's turn to um, Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. And he said unto me, unto 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Unto 2,300 2, days. Um, in prophetic time, a day is equal to one year. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 4, 6 says, I have appointed thee a day for a year. And Numbers 14, 34 says right. that each day for a year. So we're talking about... a a period of 2,300 2, years. So we're talking about a period of time. So um, we know that it's not literal because it has an end time. Mm. If um, in Daniel chapter 8, verses 17, 19, and 26, you can check that when you have a chance. Um, Gabriel says to Daniel, Understand, O son of man, for the time of the end shall be the vision. In verse 19, he says, for at the time, the, for at the time appointed, the end shall be. And verse 26, he says, wherefore, shut up the vision, for it shall be many days. So we know that this time period, the 2300 days, has, it's a, has an ending. So let's find out. So if it has an ending, what is the beginning? Um, in... Daniel chapter 8, verses 20 to 21, he reads, The ram which thou sawest have two horns, are the kings of Media Persia, and the rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between the, his eyes is the first king. So here it is, Gabriel is trying to give him uh, a time frame. He's, trying to get, he's giving him the beginning date of when this prophecy, this 2300-day prophecy takes place. Um, in, in 457 B.C., our taxes made a decree and that the Jews, the Jewish nation, can go back to their homeland. So this is the start date. And it's interesting to note in Daniel, chap in Daniel chapter 8, verses 20 to 21, that remember the story, remember um, in Daniel 2, we have the head of Babylon, the image. Um, the image. So the, the Gabriel, the angel, he starts off by referring to two horns of the kings of Media Persia. He starts Daniel off at the second image, the second kingdom, to, to signify that this 23-day hundred period, this 2,300 years starts in this time period, Media Persia in which Artaxerxes was the fifth king of Media Persia. And we find out that Gabriel goes on to tell Daniel about the little horn, which is um, the Roman Empire, the rise of the Roman Empire. The same Roman Empire, that the same Roman power that we found in Revelation 13, in which Satan gives power to the beasts. Let me recap. Gabriel is, is explaining to Daniel God's prophetic timetable. Mm -hmm. So here you have uh, 2,300 day, 2,300 years, which starts at 457 B.C. So if you add 2,300 years to 
this starting point, 457 BC, you will end up at 1844. And it's this time period that God's, pe that God's people are persecuted. And Gabriel tells, brings up about the Roman church, the rise of the Roman church. And it's interesting to note that lots of things are happening within this 2300 year prophecy, this time period. The Roman, oh, that's beautiful, a chart, I see it, it's very beautiful. <laughs> yes, um, the Roman, in this time period, so 457 BC to 1844, God's people are prosecuted. Lots of things are happening in this time period. The Roman church, um, the Roman church, the Antichrist at that time period is persecuting Jesus. Jesus is baptized, Jesus is crucified. Um, probation after the stoning of Stephen in AD 34, the Jews, um, the probation of the Jews closes as a nation. Um, further on in 538 AD, you don't see it on the screen here, but, we, but the Roman Empire has now become the Roman church. Remember the, remember the, the prophecy, the 1,260 day prophecy? That 1,260 day prophecy, which is 1,260 years, falls within this 2300 day prophecy. It all falls in between, between this point where the Roman church is now persecuting God's people. First we had the Roman Empire persecuting Jesus, and now we have the, which has become the Roman church, now persecuting God's people. That's where we had the Reformation, Martin Luther, you know, many, many people died to give us the Bible, things like that. And even in this time period, this 457 BC, don't forget that number, 457 BC, in this time period, we have the Roman, the Roman Empire, which became the Roman Church, which now the name, the first time the Roman Catholic Church name is being used is within this time period. And people, the Roman Church, the Roman Empire, the Roman Catholic Church, people are waiting for the Antichrist to come. The Antichrist is already here. And it's not against people, but it's against a system. This rabbit hole is deep. The world, people that are non-Christians, they know that something's up. Mm. And it sounds like a great conspiracy to them. But God calls it the great controversy between Christ and Satan. And at the climax of um, Daniel chapter 8, um, is God's answer. Ab um, the angel Gabriel is given Daniel God's answer to the challenge of the earthly and religious powers that have attempted to usurp the authority of God. In conclusion, Daniel 9 verses 23, at the beginning, it says, at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandments came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. There's a, there's a timetable, 2,300 years where God's people are persecuted. After this time, just before Christ comes, we will be persecuted. And God has called, um, Gabriel has told Daniel that you are greatly beloved. In other words, all the four unfallen worlds are watching, have watched Daniel, and all the fallen worlds are watching us, and they also are calling us greatly beloved. And just a quick side note, at the end of this time period, it's the same time that the Adventist church came into play with the, the message of the judgment hour in 1844. Just want to stop there. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Elder. And you may be asking, because as we are sharing uh, this lesson, you may, may be asking, well, why was the question asked, uh, when will the sanctuary be cleansed? Daniel 8.14. Uh, the response is, unto 2,300 days, then the sanctuary will be cleansed. Some of you uh, believe that this is referring to Antiochus Epiphanes. Um, this was the general who came in uh, to Israel and ordered that they offer 
swine as a mm. sacrifice mm -hmm. in the temple. And, and, and so therefore, some of you may use his conquering of Israel and uh, the, the war, etc., history, trying to put it in a short span of time. It's Antiochus and Epiphanes. And then there's also, some of you believe that this uh, helps to explain the seven-year tribulation when you go into Daniel chapter 9, the cleansing of the seven sanctuary, the, uh, the seven-year tribulation where the Jerusalem will, temple will be built again. No, that, that, that is far from, from the truth. Daniel was given this vision, the Bible says, uh, in Daniel chapter 8, uh, he was given this vision during the time of Belshazzar, uh, the king. When he was given a vision, he saw worldly empires. Babylon was no longer in existence. Media Persia, this is why when we see the animals we, uh, that represent the kingdoms, Babylon was no longer in existence. Media Persia, Greece, then we had the Roman Empire, then we had the Tan Horns, and uh, the, the Tantos that came out of the Roman Empire, the Tan Horns, and then you have the Little Horn. And this Little Horn, the Bible says, he waxed exceedingly. Mm. He not only waxed exceedingly against the prince of heaven, but, but, but he tore the truth down. Mm. In other words, that, that he, he, he came up against the prince in verse 11 of Daniel chapter 8, says he magnified himself even to the prince of hosts, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. In, in, in other words, <laughs> intercessory of man, huh? where, where man would intercede for man. And there were other false doctrines that were taught by the little horn. Well, we know, and we shared it the other week, that the little horn represented the papacy, a Roman power, uh, a civil power, judicial power, along with the church, and caused corruption inside of the church, and therefore the church became so corrupt that, that, that the scent of it made its way to heaven mm -hmm. and contaminated the sanctuary. Well, what contaminated the sanctuary? Verse 12 says that the host was given him, was given him against the daily sacrifice, reason of transgression, and he cast down the truth to the ground. So the truth that was taught by the disciples, that was taught by Jesus, that was taught by the prophets, that was taught on the day of Pentecost, he took that truth and, and, and he, he, he twisted it. And, and therefore, you, you have doctrines such as purgatory, mm -hmm. doctrines of the Immaculate mm -hmm. Conception of the Virgin Mary, it, doctrine mm -hmm. of when you die, then you go to he heaven, doctrine of, of, mm -hmm. of, of, of the saints being venerated. Listen, listen, listen. A lot of false stuff that's mm -hmm. not in the Bible, false day of worship, not in the Bible. God gave us the Sabbath. And, and so therefore, all these doctrines, false doctrines came into the church of the living God and contaminated the sanctuary mm. of God. And so therefore the question was asked from one angel to another angel, when will this stop? Mm. In other words, there was a frustration, there was an indignation, the, 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 the abomination in the church, in the temple of God, a, 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 a substituting uh, the atonement of God for the works of man, salvation by works and, 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 and eliminating grace and, and so at the end of the day, the angel asks, when will the sanctuary be cleansed? Mm -hmm. In other words, when will the truth be restored and Jesus sits at his rightful place as king of kings, ju judge and priest of all his people? Because this priest decided, the Catholicism, that he would take the place of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the question is asked, and then a vision is given to Daniel. And the vision was explained to Daniel in Daniel chapter 9, where now we go to Dr. Brianna, the angel's instructions to Daniel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dr. Brianna. Happy to see you. A pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. So as been stated, in Daniel chapter 8, Daniel receives a vision. Part of it is explained by the angel Gabriel, but part of it is not. And Daniel is distressed at the beginning of chapter 9 and prays that for understanding. And so it is clear that God wants us to understand these things because then the ga angel Gabriel returns later in chapter nine and then finishes explaining um, the vision to Daniel. And the part of the explanation um, that Gabriel's explaining in chapter nine is that verse that we've been focusing on in eight, Daniel 8, 14, the 2300 day prophecy. Now, how does this relate to our uh, subject overall topic for this lesson's chordal because we're really focusing on this 2300 day prophecy so how does that relate to 
Revelation 14. So again, this quarter has been on uh, Revelation 14. I'll read from verse 7 where it says, Saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come. And worship Him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and springs of water. So we've been studying these and we'll continue to throughout the quarter. The key here is the time of this verse that we are studying. For the hour of His judgment has come. And this prophecy in Daniel 8 gives us the key to that time of when that hour of that judgment is coming. Amen. So that's the, how these two tie together. And that's what we're going to focus on in Tuesday's lesson, the angel's instruction to Daniel. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 to 27, which Elder Allboy read at the beginning of our study today. We're going to really concentrate on those verses for the moment. So this 2300 days, and again, just... Make just reminding everyone that this explanation in Daniel chapter 9 is Gabriel speaking to Daniel. This is something we're making up or creating. This is what Daniel said, I mean, this is what Gabriel said to Daniel in explanation of his comment in 8, Daniel 8 14 for 2,300 days and then the sanctuary shall be cleansed. So, dividing that time period, that 2,300 days, in verse 24, we're going to go through section of each of these verses in 24 through 27 of Daniel chapter 9. At the beginning of 24 it says, 70 weeks are determined for your people and your holy city. Key words there, 70 weeks. If we apply the principle that Elder Matthews explained to us of the um, day for a year, we calculate that out to be 70 weeks. Um, you multiply that by seven days a week, you get 490 years. So key number there, that's the 490 years. Then this verse in 24 also says 70 weeks are determined for who? Your people and your holy city. Who is Daniel? He's a Jew. So this first amount of, this first period of time within those 2300 days is a time period specifically for the Jews. So that first chunk of time, 490 years specifically for the Jews, leads us with simple subtraction with 1,810 years for then the Gentiles or everybody else in the world. That's our first delineation that gives us some clues as to what this prophecy is speaking about. Then, as Elder Matthews also pointed out, in verse 25 of Daniel 9, it's, um, Gabriel goes on saying, Now know therefore and understand that the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem. We'll pause there. So there's a command to go and restore and build Jerusalem. This is also um, very important. If you turn to Ezra 7, you can read about this decree that goes out. Seven, Ezra 7.13 says, I issue a decree that all those of, my, of the people of Israel and the priests and Levites in my realm who volunteer to go up to Jerusalem may go with you. So there we have the decree, and we know through historical records, comparing historical records with the Bible and so forth, we know this decree when because we have the name of the king and other details like that to be able to compare with history. So we know that that date is the 457 B.C. that Elder Matthews mentioned. So that's when that decree went out. And what was some other key points that were interesting about that decree, and that helps us to know that this is the specific decree that fulfills this prophecy, is that the king um, not only lets some of the Israelites go back, but he also gives them a certain amount of like judicial power amongst themselves to judge themselves and to kind of self-regulate, as well as sponsors um, like funds and resources for their temple and their worship services and things like that if you read the rest of Ezra 7. So that's key as well, why we know the significance of this particular decree that went out. So now, back to Daniel 9. We have the 70 weeks, the period for the Jews. We know when it started based on this decree that went out. Then, going on in verse 25, it says, Until Messiah the Prince, there shall be seven weeks and 62 weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublesome times. And after, verse 26, And after the 62 weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So pausing there again. So we have then this 70 week period further subdivided into 69 weeks and one week. 
So again, the 69 weeks, if we use the day for year principle, equals 483 years. If we start that at 457 BC, then that puts us at 27 AD. 27 AD, what's the significance of that? Well, if we turn to Luke 3, quickly, Luke 3, mm -hmm. verses 121-22, we learn about Jesus' baptism. And again, comparing the, this account in Luke with historical records, we have names of key kings and so forth, so that can give us that date of um, 8, 27 AD to confirm that, yeah, so Jesus was baptized according to scripture at that time, and that perfectly fulfills this prophecy in Daniel 9 saying, the Messiah, the prince shall stand up. So that stand up, that significance shall be anointed, because Messiah means anointed. And even in Acts, it, Jesus' baptism is referred to as being anointed. Um, so we know, again, multiple clues to know that Jesus' baptism, again, is that fulfillment of that date mentioned um, in Daniel for that 27 AD where the Messiah shall stand up. That's when Jesus began his public ministry. The next step then, it says in 25, 26, in verse 26, it says that then the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. So in the middle of that week, we're in that final week of those 70 weeks. Three and a half years later, Jesus is crucified for your and my sins. He takes that penalty of our transgressions upon himself, just like it said here in the prophecy, where he would be cut off, he would die, not for himself. He didn't sin, he didn't do anything wrong, but for us. Mm. Um, Perfectly on time again, just like the prophecy said, because God's always on time. He knows exactly what's going to happen, and he reveals those things to us now and then in prophecy, which is the beautiful thing because he wants us to understand again. So Jesus dies for our sins. The prince is cut off. And then to finish the last three and a half years, there was still, God still had mercy on the Jewish nation to try to, to allow them repentance and to turn to him until finally... Um, after, so after Jesus' ascension, the disciples were still commanded to focus on Judea, Samaria, the Jewish nation, to spread the gospel to them. But finally, they fill up their cup of, um, of time and mercy, of probation for them. And that's key also as we speak of the judgment here going on in the further day's lessons. But they filled up that time of their probation when finally the Stephen was stoned. They reject the gospel. They reject the apostles. They start persecuting Christ's followers after his ascension. And that fulfills the end of that week and thus fulfills that first period of this prophecy of that 70 weeks that we focus on in Tuesday's lesson. Well done. Well done, Dr. Brianna. I, and you know what also that I, I like, brethren, is that the angel asks, when will the sanctuary be cleansed? Mm -hmm. Then Gabriel should, said, I'll show you how it will get cleansed. Come on, huh? <laughs> First he says, when, and then he says, how? As you had shared, the prince will come, the Messiah, the anointed one. And the Bible, listen, folks, the Bible prophesied the date of Jesus' birth. The Bible prophesied when Jesus will get, would be baptized in A.D. 27. Uh, uh, Daniel prophesied this was over 600 years uh, prior to the, the, the birth of Jesus. Prophesied that during the year of, of was it Tiberius? During his reign. Uh, if you go to your Britannical, if you go to the historical records, you will find out that during, is it the 11th, 13th year of Tiberius? Uh, uh, 15th? Yes. 15th year of Tiberius is in A.D. 27. Wow. So, so I can look at history and see that it coincides with the word of God that Daniel had prophesied from a word from heaven, when will the birth of Jesus be? Hmm? He will be anointed. He will get rid of sin. He will cleanse the sanctuary by dying upon the cross with the truth that there's only one mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ, and that he will bring all truths together. I like how the word of God lets us see 
historically and then shares with us that, that there, there is not an end to our, there's, there's, there's not a continuous to this experience of sin, but Jesus will bring an end to sin. I love that. This is good news here in the 2300 day prophecy. Yes, Elder. I know we have to make time leading us, but it's interesting that during this cut off, when Christ was cut off, we have to stress this, this point as well, because there is a theology or a belief system that says, oh, we don't have to keep the, the, the law of God because it was nailed to the cross. Well, truth be told, the law was nailed to the cross. And that is the law of uh, sacrifices yes. and the, cer the ceremonial laws of having to kill animals and to kill birds and to, to kill lambs and to kill bulls. That system was nailed to the cross. Why? Because Jesus was on the cross, the ultimate sacrifice. And we know this for a fact because the Bible goes on to say that at that very time in the, in the sanctuary, the veil was torn from top to bottom signifying that we don't have to kill animals anymore because Jesus was nailed to the cross. So yes, the law was nailed to the cross, the sacrificial law, not the Ten Commandments of God, which is his universal law. Amen. I'm glad you cleared up. That's where he confirmed the covenant within one week. That's a confirmation of the covenant. No more sacrifices. There ain't no new... Not no ink. I got a master's degree. There, w there is no more. <laughs> right? There's no. There's no. There's no two covenants. No, it, it's one in the same. There is one in the same. Jesus Christ, Him crucified, rose up from the grave. Yes, the law is still very much applicable, but God instituted what was already in place: law and grace by faith. Abraham, Noah found grace in the eyes of the law. But Abraham kept his laws and his statutes. So, so we can't use certain texts to be able to develop a theology that satisfies us. No, 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 no. The word of God is clear. Out of Mark Matthews. The Messiah cut, cut off is Wednesday's lesson. Um, much of what has been covered so far by Dr. Brianna, Dr. Um, out of Evan. Not even interested. Not even interested. <laughs> and out of Oboe, much of it has been basically covered. So I just want to recap. Um, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Seventy weeks are deter determined upon thy people, as um, Dr. Brianna mentioned, referring to the Jews, to make, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most high. So remember when we spoke about the 23 day 100 prophecy. So this 70 weeks falls within this time frame of the 2300 day prophecy. The 70 weeks is actually 490 years. And if we go into verse 25, um, just to recap, um, it says, Know, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem into the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks. All that equals to 483 days, which comes, which comes, which is 483 years, which takes us to the baptism of Jesus Christ. And as, we, and as we mentioned, yes, and as we mentioned, Daniel was able to prophesy when Jesus um, will be baptized. That's, that's amazing. Hmm. And also the title of this lesson was the Messiah cut off. And if you turn to verse 26, it says, and after three score and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off. Cut off means crucified, and, but not for himself. And the, not for himself means it's for you. He didn't, he wasn't crucified for himself. He was crucified, he was crucified for you and for me. Amen, amen. And, um, oh, sorry, I'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> if I may just finish up by saying, um, the prophetic chapters of Daniel 7 and 9 and Revelation focus especially on the judgment, urge, the judgment hour urgent appeal to prepare. Since 1844, 
we have been living in the judgment hour and Revelation's message of the first angel proclaims the hour of his judgment has come. Let us afflict our souls. Let us be ready. The hour of God's judgment is at hand. Amen. What I like also in chapter 9, verse 24, when it says that when he will make an end of sins mm. and reconciliation for iniquity and bring in everlasting righteousness. Those are powerful words uh, to, to, to Israel, to the Jewish nation, and even to us. When he makes an end of sins, meaning that sin no longer has authority. <laughs> right now, the wages of sin is death. Uh, it seems like that many are dying and going into the grave. But, but, but Jesus says, even if a man dies, he shall live again. He is able to make that statement because when he went on the cross, even though sin brings death, because of Jesus, man have an opportunity to have everlasting life. Sin will be annihilated, Amen. exterminated, Amen. Eradicated. eradicated, because God will be coronated, yes. huh? because he will be vindicated. Yes. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the truth of it. And, he, and, and man has already been reconciled to God that even though how we feel and it appears that it looks bad, God's view of us from heaven is that we are right on target, uh, that, 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 that it is in favor of the saints, the judgment is in favor of the saints. We are being refined and transformed back into the image of God and the prophecy foretold this will take place. Come on now, that, that, that is sweet, everyone. So no matter what your predicament, no matter how hopeless it may be, no matter how low the funds may be, even when things seem to take you off guard, maybe you're in your bed sick, maybe you're going through stuff. Hey, God has paved the way. Jesus paid it all. He's done it all. Dr. Brianna, g give us Thursday. Indeed. Yes. Certainly. Elder Alboy already gave us a wonderful explanation of the Day of Atonement because this verse you're focusing on is the sanctuary will be cleansed. So he explained that sanctuary and how there are two sanctuaries. There was the um, one in the Old Testament with the Israelites and then there's the heavenly one um, that in which Jesus is currently ministering. So he explained the significance of that Day of Atonement and now Thursday's lesson called the year 1844 puts it all together because that day of atonement mm. was a symbol of the final day of judgment, just like the rest of the sanctuary services that the Israelites did. Those ceremonial <coughs> services were symbols of what's going on in the heavenly sanctuary. So quickly, Leviticus 23, mm -hmm. verse 26, I'll pass through reading a couple um, parts of these verses here. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, Also the tenth day of the seventh month shall be the day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation for you. You shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work on that same day, for it is the day of atonement to make atonement for you before the Lord. For any person who is not afflicted in soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. And then skipping to verse 32. It shall be to you a Sabbath of solemn rest. You shall afflict your souls on the ninth day of the month at evening. From evening to evening you shall celebrate your Sabbath. Some key points that it, this brings up and as well as when this topic, the Day of Atonement, is discussed in Leviticus 16. Everyone was supposed to prepare their hearts for this day. Yeah. Here it said on the ninth day they were supposed to be preparing because the Day of Atonement happened on the 10th. But on the day before, they were supposed to start preparing their hearts because of the solemnity of this mm. service. Mm -hmm. And not just them. In Leviticus 16, it also said any foreigners, any guests, any anyone else who was with them during this time was also supposed to participate and seek the Lord, afflict their souls um, because of the significance of this day. And if they didn't, it was severe consequences. It says here in verse 29. For any person who does not afflict his soul on that same day shall be cut off from his people. There, this was life or death choices here with the Day of Atonement, just like we are faced today in our Day of Atonement, so to speak. These are life and death choices. Um, so the, the command given was to afflict their souls. And what does that mean? And what does it mean to us today, afflicting our souls? 
Um, it's rooting out sin in our lives and willing to admit our wrongs to ourselves, to God, submitting to him, willing to change. We can't fix ourselves. It's not us fixing ourselves, but it's us being willing to submit to God, to allow him to make those changes, to admit we're wrong, to seek repentance. I love the way David put it in Psalms 139, where search me, O God, know my heart, know my anxieties, search me out, show me my iniquity, so that then we can turn and give those things, give our heart to God, to then, like David also said, to cleanse my heart, purify it, give me a clean heart, O God, because our hearts are filthy and we can't come before God with those. He has to cover us with Jesus' righteousness. So this all put together, Tying it into that 2300 days, the end date when we finish do calculating all that math puts us in 1844. And what did it say? The sanctuary should be cleansed in 1844 mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end of that sequence. Well and tying that into the Day of Atonement, so we know there's not an earthly sanctuary anymore. This is the heavenly sanctuary. And we know from Revelation, fear God, give glory to Him for the hour of His judgment is come. In 1844, that hour of the judgment started in that heavenly sanctuary. Yeah. Daniel saw in 7 where it says the books were opened yes. before God in that heavenly court, in that. And the review began of all of our lives. Every secret thought, every action, um, public action comes before God as he reviews each one of our individual cases. And... It is a solemn scene, just like the Day of Atonement. Very serious. This is life or death. And Jesus has already paid the price yeah. to cover our sins yeah. so that when our case comes up before the courts in, in heaven, God doesn't see our filthy hearts, our filthy rags, as it says in Isaiah. No, God sees Christ's righteousness, His Son's Amen. perfect life Amen. in our Amen. set, so that we can come confidently, boldly before the throne of grace to seek help in our time of need, because we have a compassionate high priest who knows our weaknesses, who knows what it's like to be tempted, and is more than willing for all to come to repentance and that none should perish. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> we are coming to a close. And um, I, I want to share with you. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That word, no condemnation, Dr. Brianna, it means that there is no civil penalty. Huh? There, there, there's going to be no case against you. Uh, when you're out of Christ, out of Mark, the judgment hour is not in favor of you. There is condemnation. There's house fire at the second coming. There is actually life miserable. But, but when you're going through stuff, when there's no conde condemnation, you can cry out in Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things will work together for good, that our light affliction, which is but for a moment. While Jesus is ministering in the sanctuary, because we're going to have a song coming up for you in, in just a second. While Jesus is ministering in the sanctuary, we have an opportunity to be transformed in his image and, and to share with the world about the good news that, 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 uh, that the judgment is in favor of the saints because there's no condemnation. Because Jesus paid it all. His righteousness covers us. And, and Daniel prophesied of this event. And, and in 1844, you'd be saw that, the, that type met anti-type. And, and we are now living in the hour of his judgment. And this is why we share it. But the judgment is for the saints. The Bible says that the lake of fire is for the devil and his angels. It's not for the living. It's not for the righteous. And I, this is why there was a celebration in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. It says, and after this, I looked and behold, a door was open in heaven. Oh, that's a shout right there. Out of boy, oh boy, you should be pers perspiring by now. And the, and the door was open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither, meaning come, come with me. And I will show thee things which must come hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one set on the throne. Oh, we got to close the Bible there. What it's actually saying is that Jesus 
1844 and the cross, he took his rightful place as priest, rightful place as judge, and he sits on the throne. This is why the 24 elders who were redeemed were celebrating. This is why the beasts were celebrating. This is why heaven rejoiced at the cross because he's now sitting on the throne. And he says to us, come and see. In other words, it's going to come to an end. Come and see. Sickness will be removed. Come and see. Depression. This is, listen, come and see Jesus Christ on the throne. Let's play that song. Come and see the high priest. We have a high priest up in heaven, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, he's our defender before the Father, in a temple made by God, not man, behind the veil. In a place most holy, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, investigating, he clears the record of those redeemed by his own blood, he's blotting. Sanctuary. He seals my bond with him in the sanctuary up in heaven. He makes provision for me in the sanctuary. He's purifying heaven's temple, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, in preparation for his returning, for those who love and follow him, he's glory. provision for me in the sanctuary at the mercy seat in the holy have one in the sanctuary, thank you, Elder, that's blooding out our sins. If we fall short, if we stumble, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. As we've come to the end of Logos University, we pray that what we have shared with you, your heart has been touched. There she was. I was making my rounds in the hospital. I was pastoring this in George Seventh-day Adventist Church. I had two or three members there, and I went visiting. Now it's evening time, and as I'm leaving, I'm walking through the old King Edward Hospital, and there I saw all these people, I told you the story before, all these people inside the emergency, ailments, sickness, people were waiting to see the doctor. I looked, and Jesus said to me, Son of man, do you see what I see? I said, I do, Lord. And I looked at the security guard while people were watching television. I said, good evening, everyone. My name is Pastor Howard Eben of the St. George Seventh-day Adventist Church. Security, 
turn the television off a minute. I got something to say. He looked at me. Yes, turn it off. And he turned off the television. That's the power of God. Come on now. And, and, and then I looked at the people and I said, listen, I don't know your ailment. I don't know your sickness. But I know there's one that can heal you right now. Close your eyes and let's have a word of prayer and ask God to deliver you from this sickness, this ailment right now. I don't know how much medication you carry. I don't know high blood pressure, cancer, what the doctor is going to say. And we had a word of prayer. And I prayed, and it was just a quick prayer. Everything was done in like two, three minutes. And, and, and then when I finished prayer, I said, God bless you. And I started walking out. And when I started walking out, a lady came to me. And she said, excuse me, sir, could I get a minute with you? I said, yes, ma'am. She says, when I came in here and I had an excruciating headache, I've had it for a little while now, but it was unbearable, and I decided to come to the hospital. I don't know what's going on. If I'm clotting in the brain, I don't know what's going on, but it was, it was hurting me. But the moment you prayed, the moment you prayed, something happened, and I just want to thank you. I looked at her, and I said, that was Jesus. See, Jesus, Jesus in, the, in the most holy place, it's not just for our sins, but while we're here, he will make life easy for us. He'll make life better for us as he's preparing us for, the soon return, for his soon return. So in the name of Jesus, we're asking you, be prepared for next week when we have the anointing service. Tell your friends and family, get some oil. Go to your neighbor, to your family friend's house from 930 to 945. Pastor Steve will come, he will pray over you, and God will do something special. In the name of Jesus, we declare it. Amen? amen. I said in the name of the Jesus, we declare it. Amen? amen. We're going to ask the person who's going to pray now. Let's close out in prayer. Shall we, pray? Father God. we thank you for the message that we've heard. It's been difficult, but we thank you for sharing with us and making it simple. We ask, Lord, that you fill us with the Holy Spirit throughout this day, throughout the Holy Sabbath. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. Here are your announcements for today and the upcoming week. Here are the events in our family news. And continuing our church family news, I'd like you to remember that there is power in prayer. God sees and he hears and he will answer your prayers. So I invite you to pray for our grieving family members and those who are sick and indisposed. So, let's take a look at what's happening this week. And Sabbath School Afterglow continues in the Lower Chapel. It starts at 5.30 p.m. and is scheduled to finish at 6.30 p.m. All are invited. The deacons and deaconesses are reminded that their meeting is scheduled for tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. in the boardroom. Seniors, are you looking for something to do? Well, here is an activity for you. The Happy Seniors Club will host a show and tell day on Tuesday between 11 and 2 p.m. Come and show and tell. Our regular feeding program is on Wednesday at 4 to 5 p.m. Come on out, get a meal, serve, share, bless someone. Also on Wednesday at 6.30 is our prayer meeting service. This is your midweek power recharge. Don't miss it. Due to the public holiday on Monday, May 8th, the elders meeting is now rescheduled for Tuesday May 9th at 6 p.m. Elders, your meeting 
that was scheduled for Monday is now on Tuesday the 9th at 6 p.m. Hey, listen, you do not want to miss what's happening tonight. Right here in our youth center, there is going to be a fundraiser. Come skate and apply some glow paint at 8.15, rent a skate, buy some food, and here's the best part. It is free. Yes, admission is free. F-R-E-E. -E. It's celebration time. Happy birthday greetings are going out to Kiera Simons and Eloise Simons who are celebrating today. Happy Sabbath birthday. Here are the upcoming birthdays for this week. Tomorrow, Jonah Robinson, Amaya Smith, and Sophia Spence are celebrating their birthday. Have a happy birthday. On Wednesday, May 10th, it's a great day for M. Eloise DeShields and Adriana Showers. Happy birthday when it comes. On Thursday, May 11th, it's your day to make a wish, Dennis Joel and Leonardo Ballaru. Happy birthday to you. And a very happy wedding anniversary to Travis and Christine Keynes, who are celebrating on Thursday, May 11th. May God continue to richly bless your union. Like Paul in Philippians 4, verse 4, let me admonish you to rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice! Happy Sabbath, everyone. Today, under the auspices of the Personal Ministries Department, we are presenting to individuals who've participated in and successfully completed the recent Bible Instructors course. And at this time, I'm asking all Bible Instructors for Hamilton Church, if you please come towards the front. All Bible Workers for Hamilton Church, please just come towards the front. Thank you so much. So we have individuals who are here today. We want to thank Elder Evan Douglas for being here, stepping in for the pastoral staff, and also our very own personal ministries director, Sister Jilks. They will be on the receiving line as the individuals come forward. And we want to thank our photographer, uh, Brother Wayne, for always being faithfully present to take some pictures of you. And we have just a short time to get it done. Today we want to uh, celebrate Juliet Dilla, some of these individuals have already done the course before, but they wanted as a refresher and glean some new insight. So we have Juliet Dilla. Juliet, would you come forward? And as you come, you can come and remain on the rostrum. Next, we have Elder Morris Francis. Elder Francis. Amen. And of course, Sister Rosalind Francis. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. And Ros is going to share with us just briefly what it, this 
um, program meant to her. This was her first time doing this particular one. She's always helped her husband, but we want her to share what she got out of this one. Amen. So family, it's taken me a long time. <laughs> and I've said to myself, why did it take you so long to do this particular course? And as I reflected on it this um, past week, particularly when Sister Simons asked me, one of the things I think that hindered me was the fact that it was entitled Bible Instructor's Course. And when you think of a Bible Instructor's Course, you just think of an individual who the church is calling to come and um, do the course, but also be a part of the church and been going out to crusades and so forth, and you sort of think, no, that's not what I want to do. But I really felt the Lord calling me to actually do the course, and I'm thankful because you learn so much. So even though I'm a fervent believer in Sabbath school, I also learned that doing this additional course really grounded me in my faith to feel the confidence that God wants all of us to feel in this time to go and witness. And as you understood from this week's Sabbath school lesson, God is calling us. You don't have to know the 2300 days front and backwards, but just sharing the love of God, the love of Jesus, and demonstrating that in your life, you would truly recognize the importance of this course. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rosalind. We also have Sister Jerry Stewart. Amen. Sister Jerry Stewart. You may not see Jerry um, here physically, but this lady does some witnessing on her. She's a digital missionary witness. Thank you, Sister Jerry. And those of you who don't know, Jerry has a great responsibility of taking care of two of her aunts. And, uh, but that doesn't stop her from being a witness. Next we have, of course, we want to make mention of Brother Tatum. Brother Tatum is always there, Brother and Eugene Tatum. We have a certificate for him as well, Amen. ably assisting us and never, ever absent whenever we have these kinds of uh, programs. Thank you, Elder. And of course, we also have our newest Bible instructor on the block, Sister Quenisha Williams. Amen. Sister Quenisha Williams, okay. Praise the Lord. And you saw her bring her uh, student to the Lord uh, last, uh, two weeks ago. Even more as we're serving in this part of the vineyard. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And, and uh, by the way, the prerequisite for them to receive their certificate is that they had to be studying with somebody. Amen. And praise the Lord. If whether they have brought them all the way to baptism or not, they're studying with somebody. That's important because we can't convince and convert anybody. It's the Holy Spirit who does that. But he does want us to make ourselves available to go and find people and study with them. And last but not least today is Sister Andrea Tucker from the Somerset Church. Now, if you know Andrea, whether rain blow or shine, sick or not, Andrea is going to put her best foot forward. And I don't know if you've ever observed uh, Sister Andrea sometimes as she comes to any of the meetings. Andrea sometimes is so sickly she'll be laying down in the pew. But her mind is, I'm still going to be here. Amen. And we want to thank Andrea for your faithfulness. Andrea, you want to have a, just a quick word before you Amen. leave? Good morning and blessed Sabbath. i just like to say that we um, little struggle this morning, but by God's grace, and it's his strength that I do as I do Amen. because um, he's given me the faith and the confidence through this course. It started out such a challenge and I was overwhelmed, but God kept on saying that I am your strength. Amen. I said, Lord, I feel so, I, I, I wanted to give up, but he said, I am your strength. He says to me that I know you cannot do it because I always say in my pen like, Lord, I can't do this. And his voice just keeps on saying, I know you can, but I am your strength. Amen. And the lady that I am doing my readings with, uh, my study, 
she is so encouraging because she's always um, trying to relate things to uh, her life as she goes along and, and it's, it's really encouraging. So I'm thankful to um, have done this course and I'm looking forward to um, many more um, Bible students because it encourages me as well. Amen. And thank Praise you, Sister Lewis. Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Yes. All right. We have four more individuals, but unfortunately, because they have commitments at their church, we're unable to make it. We have Lynn Wade from the Warwick Church, Amen. and from the Rockaway Church, uh, Aaron Baisden, Maurice Clark, and Joanne DeRosa. Amen. And their pastor said to me, they are going to get that certificate. Amen. And in, in uh, Rockaway Church, they're getting theirs today, and hopefully at the Warwick Church um, Sister Lynn will be getting hers as well. So please give these Bible workers encouragement. Sometimes it's not just sitting down and study. Uh, oftentimes it's not just sitting down and studying with people. Sometimes you have to be the fireman, the nurse, the doctor, and everything else in between before you can get to actual Bible study. And that's important because isn't that what God does for us and with us? Amen. And so he just wants us to make ourselves available. Make ourselves available for him. And so right now, we're just going to take a, a quick picture, but we want to make mention of the fact that we are in a great controversy. That's right. The Sabbath school lesson lets us know that. Mm -hmm. And in the book, Great Controversy, we are reminded of that. Mm -hmm. And there is something that we all need to do. Whatever ministry you are in, do it and do it to your best. Amen. See, whatever way you can grow in that ministry. God has expectations of us. He didn't just call us to sit and stay at that level. He wants us to grow, whatever your ministry is. Take full advantage of it and Amen. grow for him. Amen. And if you have the book still that was given to you last week or the week before, Great Controversy, if it's still in your house, that should not be. If you haven't already read it, read it, pass it on. It's important. Amen. Praise God. And thank you, Sister Jokes, Amen. for allowing us this opportunity. We're going to take a quick picture, and then we'll be ready for our next service.
Sabbath, church? Sounded a bit weak to me. Happy Sabbath, church. How are you doing on this fine Sabbath? Are you feeling blessed to be in the house of the Lord today? As God brought you through safely through another week, we should be rejoicing in the gift of life that our Lord and Savior has blessed us with once again to be in this place. I don't know about you today, but today I am grateful. Uh, Today I feel empowered. Today I am happy that God has brought me through another week. I'm joyful today, church. I'm feeling good. And so I'm reminded today by the psalmist, by the psalmist David, and just before I tell you exactly what David reminded me of this week, let me invite you to stand for our cards worship. David reminded me that throughout the difficulties of our lives, we can still bless the Lord. David reminded me that even though we have a trying times, we can still say, thank you, Jesus. And so the psalmist said in Psalm 34, El Holib, that I will bless the Lord at all times. In the difficult times and in the joyous times, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear thereof and be exceedingly glad. But the psalmist didn't stop there to succeed. In verse 3, there's an invitation in verse 3. In verse 3, there's a call for the congregation to come together. David reminded us, Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. As we come in this place, as we look forward to hear a word from God, let us rejoice in his promise. Let us rejoice in his words. Let us rejoice in the fact that our Lord and Savior has seen it fit to bring us back here in this house of worship one more time. May God bless us today in Jesus' name. Amen. morning happy sabbath it says sabbath rest we set our work aside
us pray together, Spirit of the living God. Lord, indeed, in this month of May, you have blessed us with a very cool and beautiful Sabbath day. We are thankful for your mercies. We are thankful for your grace. We are thankful for this privilege we have to worship you in spirit and in truth. We understand that without you, there is no salvation. And so, God, we ask even now that you would fill this temple with your glory. Let the train of your glory fill every nook, every cranny, every crevice of this place. That when the saints of God leave this house, they will leave here with full confidence that they have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that they have been washed, they have been cleansed, and they have a new beginning with you. Father, we ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen. Sabbath rest, Sabbath rest. Standing for our opening hymn, Watch Ye Saints, 598.
Yes, can you hear me? All right. When we get to heaven, trust and believe, I will be in the corner where the music and the dancing will occur. When we get to that place, we will have gotten over, Mike. And as I prepared for today, I was sitting on my porch yesterday afternoon, and the song that I was listening to, I thought was very applicable to today. And in this song, it goes like this. Part of it says, blinded eyes will one day see. Every loss made victory. There is healing in one name. One name. He has silenced every foe, every high thing brought down low. There is freedom in one name. One name. And soon everyone will know. There still lives a blessed hope. Our salvation in one name. One name. He will one day come again to praises of all men. Hallelujah Amen. to one name. One name. I'm talking about Jesus. You didn't hear me. Jesus. Jesus, the songwriter says, I'm talking about Jesus. And today, if you have cares like me, there's one name. If you have medical issues, there's one name. If your marriage is on the rocks, there's one name. If your children are causing you issues, one name. If your work is causing you problems, one name. One name, I'm talking about Jesus, there's only one name. And this morning, I want to invite you, if you want to bring your petition to the front, because there's only one name out of Birch. One name. If you want to bring your petitions, I encourage you to come at this time as our uh, minister of music and the prayer team leads us to the throne, prepares our hearts to encounter this one name, Jesus Christ. Friend, what a friend. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. All our sins. Heavenly Father, we, your children, we come before you on bended need. We call upon the one name, Jesus, in which our salvation lies, in which redemption lies, in which our hope lies, this one name. You have created us, Lord. 
you sustain us, you provide for us. And now, Lord, I beseech on behalf of your children that you provide for them what they need. It may be medical, it may be financial, it may be uh, family related. Well, whatever their issues are, Lord, we know that you can provide. For we are told that there was no other name on which men are saved. This one name. Jesus the Christ, the Redeemer, the Sustainer, the Provider. And Lord, as our faces differ, so do our needs. So Father God, I ask and implore you that you would deliver as you have done so in the past. You have parted red seas. You have provided manna. So what are our issues that you cannot sustain or provide? Father, I ask that as you have called upon your men servant, Pastor David Steed, to bring forth a word from on high that you would provide for him this one name, Jesus the Christ. As he delivers your word, hide him behind the cross that you may be lifted up and that you will draw all men to us, to you. And at the end of it all, Lord, may you save us and may we be able to stand up and look up and say this one name, Jesus, is our God. He has come to save us. May we be with you for eternity. We thank you. We love you. We appreciate all that you have done in our lives. Let the church say, Amen. Some things we have not some. Some things we have not. Because we ask not. Because we have not. And we have. When we have. Should never we should never be discouraged when we take it to the Lord in Him to stand up and join me as we sing joy. Do you have joy in the Lord? <laughs> Does your joy come from God? That's the only joy that you can have. Sometimes we think we have joy in different things, but it's the joy of the Lord that stays and renews us and renews our strength. Okay. I've got truth and I 
today ties in a little bit with the call to worship that was given this morning and it really really warmed and blessed my heart so today I have a heart filled with praise and I just want to say thank you God for the joy of the Sabbath day and thank you God for your love towards us thank you for making us your sons and daughters we say thank you, God, for welcoming us into these hallowed hours to worship you. A special hello to Sister Eulene Wilkinson's mom and Sister Paula Tuso's mom at this time. Who is joining us in the service today? May you please stand, tell us your name and where it is that you're worshiping, welcoming from, as you say, coming from. I've seen a few faces this morning. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. My brother, good morning. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you for choosing Hamilton. Thank you. My sis. Sister Ruth, welcome. Please, in front here. Amen. 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 Welcome, my brother. Brother Don, sister, blessings. Amen. Welcome, welcome, my dear sis. Yes, and amen. And thank you for what it is that you're doing within our community. Bless your heart. Blessings. There is a blessing in today's service that God has personalized just for each one of us. May our hearts be open to receive it in Jesus' name. Welcome to the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church, where worship is a joy and the love is real. Be blessed, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Can the church say amen? Come on, I can't hear you. Can the church say amen? How many of you glad to be here in the house of the living God today? It's, it's a joy. It's a privilege. I want to welcome you again to the Hamilton SDA Church, uh, where worship is a joy to the many of us, the many thousands that listen to us on 105 FM locally, uh, to the many thousands that watch us, whether it be on Facebook, on live stream, or on YouTube. We welcome you into our services today. And we pray you are blessed uh, by what goes on in this place. Just got a few announcements uh, that I need to share with you. Uh, but first, we want to go ahead and acknowledge uh, the baptisms, which took place a couple of weeks ago. At this time, we ask our clerk uh, to introduce or welcome those persons to uh, the platform. Good morning, church family. How's everyone this morning? So as Pastor said, mic's coming apart. Uh, on the 22nd of April, we had three persons go down in the watery grave of baptism and become the newest members of Hamilton Church. I asked them to come forward as I call their names. So we... I just want to ask if our elders will come forward at this time and extend to them the right hand of fellowship. If you're an elder in this place, we invite you at this time to come forward. Uh, let's extend uh, to these three individuals uh, the right hand of fellowship as they make their way forward. Elders, please come quickly at this time. So we have Tammy Breber. We have London Rose Williams. And we have Laura Holden. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. So as everyone's coming, I will read the certificates. So it has their name. So it says, in harmony with our Lord's command, then it has their name, was baptized at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church on the 22nd day of April in the year of our Lord, 2023, and received into the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church of the Bermuda Conference on that same day, and is signed by the pastor and myself as the head clerk. Amen, amen, amen. Okay, which one is which? Is Tammy? Tammy, I don't see Tammy. I don't, Tammy. Tammy. I don't, I don't see Tammy here right now. This is Laura. This is Laura. All right, this is Laura. God bless you, lady. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs> Just stand right here. We're going to take a picture, okay? Come on, come on. This is for you, London Rose. God bless you. We're really proud of you, okay? All right, you did a great job. Come on, let's stand over here to the side. Come on up here. Let's stand right here. You are. So let's stand right here. Amen. amen. Can the church say amen? amen. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing to see these young people come down every single week, and then they finally make it in. And they are the newest members of the Hamilton SDA Church. Put your hands together for them at this time. Do me a favor. Let's start over here. Let's shake. Start with your uncle. Let's shake your hands and come all the way around to the elders. Okay. All
Amen. Can the church say amen? Thank you so much, elders. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate you greatly. You guys may go back to your seats. God's going to set you free in 2023. We are thankful for uh, the wonderful time that we experienced uh, during the revival, and we're thankful to be back uh, in this place, uh, worshiping God in spirit and uh, in truth. Just got a few quick announcements. want to congratulate, or if you would, wish our students well. Uh, tomorrow, I believe, is the Bermuda Institute Banquet. want to wish our kids well as they go there to be safe and have a wonderful Christian time in the Lord. Is that all right, church? Uh, also, uh, board meeting is May 15th. Uh, 6 p.m. here uh, in the sanctuary. We also have a business meeting coming uh, May the 20th, May the 20th at 8.15 p.m. Uh, here in the sanctuary. Uh, just got a couple of uh, Sabbath birthdays today. One is Kiara Simons. Can we say amen for Kiara? Yeah. And then we have one that has served this conference for several decades uh, as a Bible worker, uh, as someone who's brought souls to the kingdom who's continuing to bring souls, even after she's retired. She can't stop witnessing for Jesus Christ. Come on, why don't you put your hands together for Sister Elois Simons. Come on now, come on, put your hands together for her. God bless you. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. God bless you. God bless you, sis. God bless you. So excited for you. And then this next picture, normally I don't really discuss the last picture during fellowship time, but this, this picture touched my heart. You know, this picture touched my heart. There's some, there's some characters that are in this picture. Uh, it's, it's, it's from way back. I don't know, it's the 60s or 70s. It's from way back. And these are some gentlemen uh, that, that, that used to sing in this group. And they're standing next to a bunch of Poncianas because they called themselves, Mike, the Poncianas. <laughs> that, that was their name. You'll see some characters in there. You go back, look online. Uh, our good elder, uh, Brother Richardson is in that picture. Uh, brother Tread, you guys remember Brother Treadwell Smith? Yeah, he's in that picture, man. But I, I, somehow I ran up on that picture the other day and was just excited. You know, he's been in so many groups. Uh, brother Richardson's been in so many groups. And we thank God. He's still using that voice uh, to sing for God in this day. And we, God bless you, man. We're happy for you. Come on, why don't you stand together? Let's stand together. Let's stand together. Repeat after me this morning. Come on, let's get up on our feet and stretch it out just a little bit. There's no place. Uh, come on, like this place. Uh, anywhere near this place. Uh, come on, so this must be the place. Uh, come on, now look at your neighbor. Just don't be afraid. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm so glad I made it to church today. <laughs> Come on now, shake somebody's hand if you would. If you would, you feel comfortable, give somebody a hug as we worship God and we sing, Welcome to Hamilton SDA.
Good morning, church. How do you like the weather today? It's nice and cool. It doesn't even feel like summer is approaching. So, summer can be the best time to improve your health and wellness, even though it's not quite summer yet. It is on its way. This can be accomplished by implementing these seven helpful tips. The first one is sleep. Not getting enough sleep is associated with increased hunger, high blood sugar, poor concentration, frequent illness, and impaired problem solving. Make sure to give yourself at least seven to eight hours of sleep each night. Hydration. Stay hydrated. Water is the perfect way to keep hydrated and keeps, appetite, keeps the appetite in check. Add a splash of flavor with fruit juice or fresh cucumbers, lime slices, or fruit. Be creative. Add fiber to your diet. Vegetables, fruits, nuts, and grains are rich in fiber. Fiber helps you stay full, so you are less likely to eat mindlessly. Strive to eat at least 25 grams of fiber per day. Limit added sugars. Try and eat less than six teaspoons of added sugar. This does not include natural sugars found in fruit and milk. This goal may not be realistic every day, but aim for success for about 80% of the time. Save your six teaspoons for that special Sabbath dessert. When looking at labels, it is helpful to know that one teaspoon equals four grams of added sugar. And I'm sure that everyone's just doing the regular one week, one day a week dessert, right? <laughs> Stay active. The stay at home orders are gone now, so we can get out. We can go and make sure that we get plenty of exercise. Make sure it's a goal for your week and for your day and stick to it. Enjoy the weather. Studies show that when people venture into outdoor settings, heart rate and blood pressure improve. Take a moment to appreciate being outdoors. Regular sun exposure is the most natural way to get vitamin D. To maintain healthy blood levels, aim to get between 10 and 30 minutes of midday sunlight several times per week, which means daily. Gratitude. Find a moment each day to reflect on things that God has done. Being grateful and positive can help us all thrive in a healthy life. We can choose to be thankful for the gift of life, no matter how challenging our past may be, because we know that God is with us. We know that he continues to bring blessings to our lives, even in our most challenging moments. Let's continue to be thankful, not only for the good gifts, but for everything in our lives. Have a great Sabbath. Amen, amen. We're going to welcome our little ones up for children's scripture reading and offering, as well as children's story. This little light of mine.
blow it out. Won't let Satan. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus. Jesus comes. Let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. taken from Luke 22 verse 32 but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail and when you have been converted st strengthen your brothers may God add a blessing to the reading of his holy word Good morning. And how are we all this morning? I'm tired. <laughs> what you can do when you get my age? <laughs> okay, before I start, there's a lady that I saw Sister Velvet in the marketplace parking lot. And she gave a donation of $20 for the children's offering. Amen. Yeah. So uh, we want to thank you. And uh, if anyone else uh, feels so inspired by, well, we're all here. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. I have a story that lets you know how disobedience can affect you or be a part of you for a long time. How many of you have a scar? Mm -hmm. uh, how many of those scars came from being disobedient? <clears throat> well, there was a time many, many years ago uh, Brother Tatum was about maybe a little younger, maybe about your age, was very much disobedient. Remember the years, you may not remember, but your parents, maybe even not your parents, your, your grandparents, right? they had these old washing machines. And on the washing machines, they had something like a ringer. You, you put the clothes through, right? And, and, and the ringers would squeeze the water out of the washer, of the clothes, right? 
Mm, yeah. <laughs> Brother Tatum one um, was told to stay away from the washing machine. So what did he do? Hey, see, children have not changed. <laughs> children have not changed. Brother Tatum went to that washing machine. Not only did he went to the washing machine, he was very disobedient. Because like Eve, he went, she picked the fruit off the tree, right? So Brother Tatum touched the washing machine. Not only that, he went up to check the ringer out. You know the ringer that uh, brings all the water out of the clothes? And he decided he was going to put his hand in the ringer. Mm. And when he put his hand in the ringer, his hand went all the way through. Ah, and up to today, Brother Tatum has that scar from disobedience. You want to see it? Yeah. See that right, scar right there? Yeah, that, 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 that scar has been there for... Ages. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. You're right. For ages. <laughs> it, <laughs> but it is a result of what? Disobedience. And I have that scar. And in fact, it's uh, even on my passport as a distinguishing mark now. <laughs> the mark of disobedience. So let's not us get a mark of disobedience so we can carry around for our lives. But we will be obedient to our mothers, our fathers, our parents, grandparents, that we will not have the mark of disobedience. Amen? Now who's going to pray for us? Please bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of life. Thank you that today is your Sabbath day. Please help us to keep it holy. Please help us not to be disobedient to you. Please, please be with us as we go throughout this day. Please help us to have a blessed Sabbath. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 blessing what a blessing we have just two quick things two quick things it's in your bulletin but I think it's worth mentioning because some of the family are here uh, this beautiful floral arrangement that you see in front uh, is in loving memory of sister Marlene Madden uh, on her on her one year death anniversary you believe a year has already gone past uh, remembered missed and loved dearly by her children Ricardo and Malaysia Madden and family I saw a few of them at the back. I know Malaysia's back there. If you guys could just stand so we could just see you. Is that all right? Sister Madden's family here in the house of God. We praise God for them. Can the church say amen? amen. Praise God. Of course, Brother Dillis. Can't forget Brother Dillis. That's his sister. But it's one year. One year. I can't believe a year has gone by uh, that, that quickly. Then secondly, I uh, just found out as shaking hands through the crowd uh, that indeed uh, our visitor 
all the way from Canada is celebrating his birthday today. Amen. Now here's the thing, here's the thing. He and his wife, they watch us every week and they're delighted to be here in God's house to experience it for themselves. And, and so, and so I, I, you know, normally we don't do this. We normally wait till the end of the month. But I want to ask this lovely couple, just don't, don't let him walk by himself, sis. Let's, let's bring him down here and let's sing happy birthday to him so he can, he can see himself when he goes back to Canada. Is that all right? Come on back here. Come on down here. Let's sing happy birthday. Come on down here. We want to invite this lovely, now, now, now. Now, they don't have it on their Sabbath best. They are on vacation, okay? They're on vacation, but it's all right. We're just delighted that they are here in this place. These are, these are like overseas members. These are overseas members. Got to recognize them when they come in here. Got to recognize them when they come in here. Come on now. They're relaxed. They got on their, their vacation mode. This is their vacation mode. Come on now. Let's sing happy birthday to them at this time. Let's sing happy. Wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What's, 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 what's the name? What's the first name? Donovan, we're just singing to Donovan, though. we're not singing to Michelle. Come on, come on, let's, let's, let's sing at this time. Let's sing at this time. hands together for them. Put your hands. God bless you guys. You may go back to your seats. Uh, an usher or, 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 or deaconess will greet you at the door uh, with a card, a uh, very important card, so that you can uh, have your membership transferred from Canada uh, all the way here to Bermuda. God bless you. So delighted that you joined us here today. Let's move forward with our offering at this time. seems to be spinning out of control. There's wars, there's bloodshed, there's natural disasters. The economy seems to be uncertain. People in the world believe that there's a conspiracy going on. But God has told us that it's the great controversy between Christ and Satan. Revelation 13, verse 17 says, and that no man might buy or sell, save if he have the mark of the beast. That means that there's coming a time when we won't be able to function in society. We won't be able to pay things, our groceries, our bills, with the money that is at hand. And the danger is, there's a saying that says, more money, more problems. The danger is that the more money we have, the more stake we have in this world, there's going to be a pressure to conform how to be prepared. How to be prepared. We are to make sure that we are not slaves to money. And if we are not bound to money now, we will not be bound to money then. And that is why God has introduced to us the tithing system to protect us from selfishness and to teach us to trust in him. Returning our faithful tithe and offering is no guarantee. But those who are not faithful are in trouble. But there's good news. There's good news. In Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, it says, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Amen? Amen? Amen. At this time, we ask the deacons and the deaconess to please stand. Shall we pray? Father God, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit in this place. We ask that the monies that are to be collected may go forth to 
finish the work, to carry on the work, and may souls be saved into your kingdom. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, let God's people everywhere say, Amen. 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 I just want to praise you. can be found in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. And the Bible says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Amen. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, thy Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. It is my desire and my wish that you'll be blessed by God's holy word. Amen. The song says, you reign. Who could we be talking about? Our God reigns. Amen. Jesus, he reigns over your circumstance. And he's giving you another chance because he reigns. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, Lord. Amen. Rain. 
aren't you glad that you serve a God that still reigns? <laughs> Your God wasn't carved out of wood. It wasn't carved out of a stone. Your God is alive and living. <laughs> and because of that, we should rise and give him praise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among you.
Can the church say amen? Can we praise God for our young people that are singing their hearts out for Jesus Christ today? We praise God for their part in the worship service, and we pray uh, that as they get older, that they will still be in God's house worshiping the Lord. Can the church say amen? Uh, we want them involved, and we want them apart. They are not just the future, uh, they are also the present. Can the church say amen? amen. And we praise God for uh, their worship and song today. Let us pray, Spirit of the living God. In the wee hours of this morning, you and I had a conversation about this moment. Speak now, Lord, for thy servant is listening. In Jesus' name, let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. amen. Come on, somebody say amen again. Amen. I understand that this coming Monday is a holiday. And it's a holiday because of what happened today. Uh, there was, uh, if you would, amazing pomp and circumstance as England always does, uh, to celebrate and bow before a king. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not in this message yet, but I, I, I just want to pause parenthetically just for a minute <laughs> to remind you that, uh, yes, he's the king of England, but today uh, we have come here to celebrate the king of the universe. <laughs> uh, yes, people bow before him, but uh, you may not like it, but at some point, if time goes on, uh, he will die. <laughs> uh, but the God we serve, <laughs> it is true that he did die. <laughs> uh, but no one killed him. <laughs> he laid down his own life. <laughs> He said, I lay my own life down again, and I, and I, and I take it up again. <laughs> uh, not just that, it, it's okay to be a king and die, but if you're going to be the real king, you've got to get up. <laughs> and I, I, I just need to let you know that if time goes on long enough, uh, that if you would, uh, the king of England will die. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> that same king of England <laughs> has to bow himself before the king of kings, <laughs> And Lord of Lords. Oh, everybody's bowing to him today. But on that day, he will have to fall prostrate before the maker of the universe. The one that keeps breath in his body. The one that sustains him every day. I need you to understand. If they can have all of that pump and circumstance about a human... I think we ought to testify today about the goodness of Jesus and all uh, he's done for us. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is that he deserves our adoration. Uh, why? Because when it came to saving us, he didn't ask us, if you would, to come and kiss his ring. Uh, he didn't ask us to come and put on a big celebration for it. No, no, no. Matter of fact, when it came to saving us, he took off all of his kingly vesture, came down here as a regular man uh, that he might redeem us uh, from our sins. Uh, and so because of that, we're going to celebrate Jesus today. Is that all right? Uh, the real coronation uh, is the man we call Jesus Christ. Uh, yes, I know. I know. It's a lot of pump and stuff. It looks all gaudy, all kind of gold, all kind of trimmings, all kind of this and that. But I'm sorry. They've got a lot of gold. They've got a lot of display and all kinds of stuff. But they don't have uh, as much as Jesus. Uh, the fact of the matter is, he's still right now uh, up in glory paving his streets with gold. Oh, gold is asphalt in heaven. Uh, come on now. And I need you to grasp this concept because there's nothing better, nothing worth more honor and praise uh, than the man we call Jesus Christ. And so today when you come into this house, 
You need to thank God for his goodness. Thank him for his grace. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his protection. Thank him for watching over you this past week. Thank him for watching over you last night. In the midst of your sleep, the devil tried to take you out. But as the preacher said the other night, God kept you so you wouldn't let go. I need somebody here to grasp the concept today that you're here because he kept you. Uh, oh, is there a witness here? Did he keep somebody in God's house today? Did he protect you this past week? Uh, some of you know uh, you've had some scares at the hospital. Uh, my brother, you know, this is always the case. Uh, my brother here is back in church after 15 months. Uh, and while you sit there quiet, he can't stop waving his hands. Uh, because when he thinks about what he's been through uh, and where he is today, uh, he can't keep quiet. Uh, God has done something something. Uh, the problem with some of us is we don't have a testimony. Uh, hence, we cannot testify uh, because we haven't been through something. Uh, but if you've been through something, somebody ought to shout hallelujah this morning. Uh, somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh, did he bring you through? Uh, oh, my God, I need you to grasp it today because the truth of the matter is throughout Revelation, all we see is that God is in control. I don't know about you. But throughout the entire book, God is in full control. Which means, even in your life, as crazy as it might seem right now, God is in control. It's an amazing moment because I lift up before you. I want to go to verse 13. If that's all right with you, I want to go to verse 13 of the seventh chapter. I just want to read this one verse. Verse 13 of the seventh chapter. Of the revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation chapter 7. And the Bible says this. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? I know that's the King James Version. I think English Standard Version gives a slightly better, uh, if you would, translation. It says, then one of the elders addressed me, saying, who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? Mm. Oh, Lord, help us. I've entitled this jubilant, this exultant, this paradigm shifting pericope. Who are these people? Who are these people? If you would turn with me as a lead in to this particular chapter, one should understand that John has a habit of offering what we call springboard texts. In other words, he likes to spring you, if you would, from one chapter to the next. And he gives you a lead-in question oftentimes or a lead-in statement that he then answers in the next chapter. Now, it's important to realize this because this chapter, if you would, if we take a look at Revelation chapter 6. I want to go to Revelation chapter 6 right quick. Uh, and you may have that on the screen in a minute, but go to Revelation. For those of you that brought your Bibles, let's go to Revelation chapter 6 because I need you to understand that the last few verses... Uh, if you would, lead into Revelation chapter 7. It's important to realize in Revelation chapter 6, verse 17, uh, uh, after the great earthquake, after the sun became black as sackcloth, after the moon became blood, after the stars fell from heaven to the earth, the heaven departed as a scroll, every mountain is moved out of its place, every man on earth hid themselves, the kings Come on now, uh, great men, uh, rich men, captains, mighty men, every bond man, free man did themselves, if you would, hide in the dens and in the rocks and begging for the rocks and mountains to fall on them, to hide them from the face of the one that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The Bible then says, uh, for the great day of his wrath is come. 
who shall be able to stand? Chapter 7 answers this question. Who shall be able to stand? It's important to realize that in John's writings, John, if you would, when it comes to the opening of the seven seals, you need to understand this. John answers this question emphatically. But in chapter 6, if you would, we find the opening of the sixth seal, and then he skips to chapter 8, to actually open the seventh seal, which we already preached, that silent period when Jesus comes to take us home. In between that, he wants to let you know who will be able to stand in that day. John answers this emphatically in chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 is inserted between, if you would, the opening of the sixth and the seventh seal. Between the events that lead us to the second coming of Christ and his glorious return. Who is able to stand? Does, does, if you would, Revelation 7 answer. And Revelation 7 tells us that it is the 144,000 and uh, the great multitude uh, that will be able to stand. That's who's going to be able to stand in that day. The first half of the chapter deals with the 144,000. The second half deals with this great multitude that are in, in the presence of God's throne after passing through the time of great tribulation. The Bible talks about four corners, uh, if you would, the north, the south, the east, and the west. Let us turn, if you would, to chapter 7. The Bible says, and after these things, I saw four angels standing in the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. I need you to understand uh, that right now, if you would, uh, and I think sometimes we miss the context of this, but right now, if you would, the angels are holding back the four winds of strife. There are sometimes we think that perhaps these four winds of strife are the devil's doing. Oftentimes we think, well, oh, they're protecting us from total destruction from the devil. But the text makes it very, very clear that the strife that they are holding back is not, if you would, some terrorist activity from the devil, but rather they are holding back the winds of the wrath of God. Oh, Lord, help us. That in essence, when God lets go of his wrath upon the earth, that in essence, you have to understand you have to be on one side or the other. Oh, Lord, help us. Uh, the four winds represent the destructive forces that are the agents of God. The winds of God are chariots. We understand that his chariots are the angelic hosts of heaven, uh, which means uh, that the angelic hosts, the billions of angels, are holding back, if you would, the winds of strife until God gives the command uh, that his people are now all sealed. Until that happens, uh, they're holding it back because you need to understand that if you would, there are two things going on. Number one, the people of God must be sealed so that they can be protected from the wrath of God. Oh, Lord, help us. In other words, in other words, if you're on the Lord's side, you want to be protected from his wrath. Hold on a second. Now. Hold on a second. It goes the other way. Because if you're on the devil's side, you're also protected from his wrath. Lord Jesus. <laughs> if you're on the devil's side, you won't receive his wrath. If you're on the Lord's side, you won't receive the Lord's wrath. Well, you're going to get it in just a second. Uh, that, 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 that in essence, uh, if you would, the devil uh, will persecute the saints of the Most High in the last days. If you're on the Lord's side, uh, then you will suffer persecution. In this world, uh, ye shall have tribulation. Uh, but be of good comfort uh, because I've already overcome the world. Uh, now I need you to understand uh, that you can't, if you would, walk through this life without facing some sort of tribulation. Uh, either you're going to take it from the devil or you're going to take it from God. It's an amazing thing because those people uh, that insist on doing things their way, those people that insist on living their life their way, they will, if you would, escape the wrath of the devil. 
but they will not escape the wrath of God. I don't know about you. Uh, David says, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. I, I need somebody here to understand uh, that you're better falling on the rock that is Jesus Christ uh, than to have to face his wrath. Uh, it's an amazing moment because if you would, later on in Revelation, it's pointed out that when his wrath it will be poured out, it will be poured out without mixture, without mercy, without grace. When his wrath is poured out when God's wrath is poured out upon the earth there will be but here's the thing uh, the devil if you would can protect you from his persecution but he can protect you from the seven last plagues. Oh, he can keep you uh, from being thrown in jail, but what he can't keep you from uh, is if you would, boils uh, popping up all over your body. Come on now. You talk about torture, you get boils on your body. Come on now. Then the sun comes out and scorches the boils that are on your body. <laughs> then you try to run down to Horseshoe Bay, down to Long Bay, if you would, down to, to, to the water side and jump in the water and the water's been turned to blood. If that's not enough, after the water's turned to blood, the people would be so frustrated that they will try to kill themselves uh, and they won't be able to kill themselves. Yeah. Trying to commit euthanasia, trying to commit suicide and God won't even let you do that. You need to understand uh, that God has already won this battle. <laughs> The battle <laughs> is not yours. <laughs> it's the Lord's. <laughs> I need you to understand today that there's nothing you're going through that God cannot fix and that God cannot deliver. And whatever the outcome of that is, uh, you need to understand uh, that the best thing you can make sure is that when it's all said and done, you are in God's hands. Uh, you want to suffer if you would now uh, so you can be victorious later. <laughs> Lord help us. But you will suffer. You can't make it without some suffering. You can't get there without a struggle. The amazing thing is, is because if you would, the Bible lets us know that in essence, from the rising of the sun, of always significant of the eastern skies, it's important to realize that in these last days, we're going to have to go through a whole bunch of stuff. But you know what protects us, church? You know what protects us during the time of trouble? It is the seal of God. Now I need you to understand what the seal of God is all about. It's very similar, if you would, or it's one and the same to what happened on the night of the Passover when the children of Israel were about to leave Egypt. You will remember that they had to do a couple of things. Well, a few things. Uh, but one of the things they had to do was they had to go and kill a lamb and they had to cover the post, if you would. They had to, if you would, make, if you would, the motion of brushing the side post uh, and they had to make the motion of brushing the top post. Uh, they brushed the side post uh, and then they brushed the top post. Uh, they brushed the side post uh, and then they brushed the top post. Uh, they brushed the side post uh, and then they brushed the top post. Why? Because uh, in that moment uh, they were pointed to a hill called Calvary uh, where one day uh, Jesus would lay down his life. Uh, they had to understand uh, that the only thing that could get them from Egypt to the promised land is if they were covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I need somebody here to understand today that you can't make it to heaven uh, unless you are covered uh, with the blood of Jesus Christ. They also had to eat some unleavened bread. Ah, uh, because uh, it took a perfect sacrifice. Uh, Jesus couldn't make one mistake. He had to be perfect in order to deliver us. Uh, and he did his job to perfection. Didn't make one mistake. And somehow we can't trust him to handle the affairs of our lives. And we make mistakes every single day. He's never made a mistake. He's never been late. And he's never had a medical condition he couldn't heal. Oh, somebody in God's house needs to understand that there is no medical condition that God cannot heal. It's an amazing moment because they came out, if you would, with great substance. But on the night of the Passover, 
when the death angel passed over, if he saw the blood, if he saw the blood, that was a signal to keep on moving. Oh, if he saw the blood, oh, the song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I need you to understand that in heaven right now, Jesus is interceding on our behalf. I need you to understand that up in heaven, Jesus is praying for you. Woo! Hold on a second now. I know you get down and I think you think your prayers are really, really good. But oh, to hear how Jesus prays for you, how he intercedes on your behalf. Ellen White lets us know that when we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just. But here's what she says, that fresh from the wounds of Calvary, fresh from his hands comes blood to wash our sins away. Understand, you can't get to heaven uh, unless you believe uh, in the blood-stained banner of Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, I need somebody to understand today that it's the blood uh, that washes us clean. It's the blood that sanctifies. It's the blood of Jesus that pays for our sins. Uh, you can't pay for it yourself. You need somebody who hasn't messed up to pay for your sin. It's an amazing moment because sometimes we say that, but the truth of the matter is to some extent, you can't can pay for your sins. You just can't get up afterwards to tell us about it. Oh, Lord, help us. If you pay for your own sins, there is no resurrection for you. If you pay, the Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Understand that if you pay for your own sins, then you will die the second death. And coming back from the second death is an impossibility. The wicked will be annihilated in the last day and they will suffer the second death and they cannot return. And the truth of the matter is, is that anybody who dies today is only dying the first death. That's why on resurrection morning, everybody will get up either in the first resurrection or the second resurrection because Jesus already paid for everybody's sins. You can't even get up in the second resurrection unless Jesus already died for your sins. It's an amazing thing, but he died to give everybody a chance. You've got to accept the free gift so that when you get up, you get up in the first resurrection. Oh, Lord, help us. You know, when you get up, let me tell you something. When you get up, if you happen to pass away, when you get up on resurrection morning, the last thing you want to see is the new Jerusalem. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. <laughs> Come on now. When you get up, the last thing you want to see it's streets of gold. Huh? It's a big old pearly city. Lord, you done messed up. Huh? That's the last thing you want to see. But here's the thing. It goes deeper than that. The last thing you want to feel when you get up is the same pain you went down with. Lord, help us. Sir. The last thing you want to feel is I still got diabetes. I still got high blood pressure. Come on now. The last thing you want to do is wake up on resurrection morning asking for your blood pressure medicine. No! You want to wake up? Let me tell you what you're looking for. If you happen to die in the Lord, when you wake up, what you want to see is a cloud that's sitting up in the sky with Jesus and the angelic host sitting up there and Jesus beckoning you to come forth because I need this family, even the Madden family that is here with us today. Don't you ever forget it. You put the text in, in, the, in the bulletin yourself, but I need you to never forget that the Lord himself uh, shall descend with a shout, uh, with the voice of the archangel, uh, with the trump of God, and the dead uh, in Christ uh, shall rise first. The Bible says you won't be able to prevent those people. Uh, and let me tell you something. You also can't prevent people that God has brought back from a bunch of mess in church. While you're quiet, they shout. They shout so much, they irritate the mess out of you. But they don't care about you because what they've been through, you have no idea. That the struggle they are going through right now, you've never experienced. So I don't care particularly what you have to say or what you think about my praise. I may sing off tune. Lord, help us, man. Come on now. But I'm going to sing anyhow because God has redeemed me. 
uh, by the blood of the Lamb. Uh, I'm not going to be passive uh, about my praise. Uh, I'm going to sing out of tune uh, until resurrection morning. Uh, then you hear me perfectly in tune. Uh, I'll be singing with the angelic host uh, because I've been redeemed uh, by the blood of the Lamb. I'm trying to get somebody hope in the second row. Somebody ought to say amen. My God. Huh? There's coming a day when we will rejoice and sing in sweet harmony. Huh? Hold your alto. Hold your bass. Hold your soprano. Come on now. We're going to sing. Oh, come on now. Some of you are going to turn to musicians playing harps. Lord Jesus. Come on now. Some of you have no rhythm. Go have a little rhythm when you get to glory. Huh? Oh, we're going to worship. We're going to have a glorious time. But I need you to understand, when we look at this text, if you would, here, Revelation, John names the 12 tribes that make up this 144,000. Yeah? Now, for years, some people thought this was a literal number, that only 144,000 people could make it to heaven. But when you look at the text, the 12 if you would, sons, or 12 persons that are named are not even the 12 sons of Jacob. It's not even the original 12. As a matter of fact, the unfaithful ones are discarded and replaced with faithful people. Oh, Lord, help us. Come on now. Come on, it's okay to say that amen about the text. But I need you to understand that in the last days, Lord, help us. There will be a shaking. <laughs> and the faithful will replace the unfaithful. Uh, 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 uh. In, in other words, there are some people that God is holding. You know, we, we actually have this in our own teachings, in our own doctrine. That we actually teach that God has a visible and an invisible church. Lord help us. There are people who come to church every Sabbath. There are a bunch of people that he's holding out because he can't trust them around you. <laughs> he, has to, he has to, in essence, get you fixed first or get you out before he brings them in. Oh, you know, you know how you are. You know, you know how you run off people that don't look like you, don't sound like you, don't act like you. They get ostracized. They come church in a house full of people and feel alone because you're more concerned about your image than showing the love of God. Oh, Lord, help us. I wish I, wish I had a witness in this place. But, 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 but I need you to understand. It's okay. I'll say amen to myself. Amen, self. I need you to grasp. I need you to grasp this because uh, when we get to heaven, and I've drawn this to you many times, but when we get to heaven, guess what? A lot of the people that you can't stand down here will be up there. Here's the problem. If you still can't stand them, I don't know. Maybe Jesus will send you a video of them in heaven while you're in hell. I, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe he'll send you a text message. I don't know how to send it. But, but, but understand uh, that if you don't learn to love the person that's sitting not right next to you on the other side of church or in the back of church or the, you know, you know the person, you know, come on now. Every Sabbath, you do everything in your power to avoid Oh, Jesus. They get on your last nerve. You can't stand them. Can't stand them. And you avoid them. You avoid them. You avoid them. There is no avoidance in heaven. There's one Jesus. There's one river of life. There's one tree that feeds all the nations. And I need you to understand there's also only one bloodstained banner. And if you make it there, it's because you have learned not just to like everybody, but you've learned to love everybody. The truth of the matter is that there's some people down here that you will never like. There are some people, it's going to take the miracle of the resurrection in order for you to like them. But it shouldn't take the miracle of the resurrection for you to love them. Lord help us. 
Hello, hello. And you have to learn to love people that you don't like. That's called agape love. You see, when you just love the people that you like, you haven't done anything. <laughs> Until you love the people that you can't stand, you can't go to heaven. Uh, hold on a second now. You say, preacher, what's the big deal? The big deal is, is that when Jesus came down here, he loved us, but he couldn't stand us. Hold on a second. When he comes the second time, he's coming for people that he loves, but not a people that he can stand. Hmm, how, how you know, preacher? How you know? The Bible says about the church of Laodicea, he said, I wish you was cold, I wish you were hot, I wish you were something. You make me so sick to my stomach, all I can do is spew you out of my mouth. Because you have a form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof. You look like a Christian while you are the devil himself. You've convinced everybody in church that you are got one and a half feet in heaven. One and a half. It used to be just one. Some people think they have one and a half. That the other half is just waiting for Jesus to usher you in. When what you don't realize is that if who you are doesn't match who you are when you're not here, then in essence you are going nowhere. It's all right. Say amen to myself. I'm, 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 I, I'm not afraid. It is what it is. Truth of the matter is, you don't get it together, you will be replaced. There is nobody that is irreplaceable in the house of God. Nobody. 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 I don't care if you return a faithful tithe. I don't care if you sing in the choir. I don't care if you pray. I don't care if you preach. I don't care what you do. There is nobody that is irreplaceable in the house of the living God. But here's the thing. It's a special literary technique that John likes to use because if you would, in Revelation 1, he hears a trumpet. But when he turns and looks, he sees Jesus walking in the midst of the golden candlesticks. See, what he hears is not the same as what he sees. But here's the thing, though. <laughs> what he hears and describes in terms of what he hears doesn't look like what he sees, but they're always, if you would, pointing to the same thing. Oh, Lord help us. So although he hears a trumpet and he sees Jesus walking, the trumpet and Jesus are the same. <laughs> if you would, later on, he hears, you know, he begs the question, who can open the book? He hears, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah. But when he turns, he sees a lamb slain. Mm -hmm. Later on, he hears about the harlot. He sees a woman sitting upon, if you would, the, the, this beast, and she is Babylon. And then, if you would, if that's not enough, hmm. uh, in the last or the second to last book, the Bible says... That if you would, he hears that the bride of the Lamb is coming. Yes. But when he turns and looks, he sees a city. <laughs> oh, he sees a beautiful city coming down out of heaven. And it's the same literary technique that he uses in this text. I need you to understand, he says... I hear, or I heard the number was 144,000. The reason why this number is pushed forward is because it is a militant number. In other words, the people in this number are a now perfect people. They are in military formation, if you would. 12 times 12, and you have a 1,000 in every single rank. The truth of the matter is, is that if you would, even when John wrote this book, only two of the tribes were still in existence. He clearly is not talking about a literal number because if you would, 10 of the tribes have already been done away with at this moment. There's only two left. So what is he saying? Uh, what is he saying? That in essence, if you would, not only are they in military formation, but Michael, the man we call Jesus, is their leader. Michael is Jesus' 
warrior name. Come on now. Some of you got different names. Uh, you know, sometimes you play basketball, you play football, whatever it might be. You got other names you call yourself. Uh, when you're out there playing, you might call yourself Pele. You might call yourself Maradona. Uh, come on now. You might call yourself Ronaldo. If you're playing golf, you might call yourself Tiger Woods. Uh, if you're playing, if you would football, you might call, well, I ain't going to say, you, you might call yourself, whatever. but the truth of the matter is, it's not necessarily who you are, but it is what you're trying to represent. And understand uh, that Michael is his warrior name, and that's the name he's using to lead us to victory. And so when the number is put out there, 144,000, it's just, if you would, a figurative number, because the Bible says uh, in verse 9, after this I beheld. In other words, I heard 144,000, but when I turned and I looked, I saw a number that no man could number standing on the sea of glass. And I need you to understand that if you would, the great multitude and the 144,000 are the same group. It's just simply saying that you've got this great multitude uh, that have perfected their characters. They are right. Uh, they are ready to go home. They are sealed uh, with the living God. They've been through a whole bunch of stuff, and now they have made it through. Here's what the Bible says, if you would. The Bible goes on and lets us know, and the angel, verse 11, all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and about the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshiped God. I, I'm, I'm so interested to get to heaven to see if the angels up in heaven have a bunch of bruises on their face because they're always falling on their face before the living God saying amen. This is what they say up in heaven. In heaven they say amen. Oh Lord help us. They say amen up in heaven. They say blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto God forever and ever. And then they say amen one more time. Oh I wish if it down then people just say amen and church for no reason whatsoever. You don't need to hear a song. You don't need to hear a sermon. You don't need to hear something to give God some praise. You've got food in your stomach. You've got gas in your car. You've got a job. When you walk into church, you ought to say amen. When you're coming to God's house, you ought to say thank you Jesus. And one of the elders answered saying unto me, here's the thing, here's the thing. And one of the elders said unto me, what are these? which are arrayed in white robes. And whence came they? Here's the thing. Here's what John says to the elder. Huh? This is a human talking to a human. John says this to the elder. He said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. In other words, you know. What the world are you asking me for? In other words, no, 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 this is John. And he said unto me, These... <laughs> Lord help us these are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them hold on now some of you have trouble doing something for church for more than an hour. Up in heaven, in church, they serve day and night. Lord, help us. They worship him day and night. Lord, help us. Some of you are thinking twice about heaven already. They serve him day and night. Here's the thing. They are before him. They shall, here's the thing, though, here's the blessing. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Come on, let me bring that down into Bermuda terms. They shall hunger no more. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. I'm trying to talk to somebody. Uh, they shall hunger no more. Yeah, it's okay. I'm going to come right down. Yeah. In other words, when we get to glory, half a watermelon will not cost $15.99. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. A whole watermelon will not cost $25. 
Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to start a protest. Somebody needs to do something because they have lost their ever-loving minds. And I need you to understand that you're going to a place where you won't have to pay for food anymore. You'll be able to go and pick and eat. And if you would, have plenty to fill. You won't have to pay exorbitant prices. Why? Because Jesus paid it all. And all to him we owe. Sin has left its crimson stain, but he's washed us white. And so understand, all the food up in glory is already paid for. Lord, help us, man. Come on, that ought to make Bermudians. Every Bermudian should be marching into the kingdom when they hear that food is free in glory. Lord, help us, man. They have lost it out there. The prices go up every week, not every month, not every year, every single week. You can pay one price over here, go to a different store and pay half the amount over here. You feel like you're some sort of yo-yo having to go from store to store trying to find the cheapest price. But I need you to understand that when we get to glory, there's only one tree of life and everybody is welcome to the tree and can feast. Oh, Lord, help us up. Come on now. A different fruit every month. Lord, help us. Now, I went to Jamaica the other day. Lord, help us. You know, I do believe loquats will make one of the months and maybe cherries. Let me tell you something, man. I expect those mangoes at least twice a year. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to tell you that right now. Listen, listen. I'm telling, li uh, listen. When we, listen. You see people now. I mean, you, you see Bermudians gardening like you've never seen before. Amen. It's a good thing. Yeah. You know, trouble and trials sometimes bring out good things. Matter of fact, uh, my good friend, Sister Smith, she's a Janice Smith. She makes these nice salad greens, you know. I get them from her, you know. They're really, really good. Change the whole taste of a salad, you know? It's a beautiful thing. They're not regular, it's not just regular green leaves, it's just, it's a variety. It's, I got colors, different colors inside my salad. It tastes righteous, man. You should try it out, you should, you should try it out. After she takes care of me, you can go try it out. But, but, it's, but it's important, it's important to realize that in essence, when we get to heaven, everything will be there in abundance. It's an amazing thing because the people have been through a whole bunch of stuff these people have been through everything. They ain't hungry no more, thirsty no more. Come on now. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. It's very important to realize that that heat will affect the saints even during the time of trouble. For the Lord, here's why, for the Lord which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. Now, I, know, I know some of you in here think you can cook, you know. How many of you really think you can cook in here? Raise your hand. Don't, don't raise your hand if you know nobody eats your food. Come on. But, but, but raise your hand. Huh? Raise. Okay, just, just some people raise your hand. It's, it's, it's important to realize when we get to heaven, as good as we can cook, Andre, Jesus will feed us. Amen. Jesus will feed us. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He don't just feed us. He shall lead them into living fountains of waters. Huh? When we get to heaven, Jesus is not just the great physician. Huh? He don't need to heal nobody anymore. He turns into the greatest chef you've ever seen, <laughs> feeding you the best food you ever had and giving you the best water you have ever tasted. Huh? And then the Bible says this, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Uh, I need the Madden family to understand that God will wipe away all tears from your eyes. I need you to understand that Sister Madden will rise again. I need you to understand that you will see your mother again. Your challenge is to make sure your heart is right so that you can see them in peace. But I need you to understand as we close that you can't go through this world without going through something. And I need you to understand that right now you may be hurting and in pain because your loved one is in the grave. You may be hurting and in pain because of what you're going through. But I need someone out there 
to receive this word right now uh, that you might appear defeated. Uh, you might appear dejected. Uh, you might appear demoralized, uh, destitute, desperate and depressed, despairing and downtrodden. Uh, but if God is for you, uh, then who can be against you? Uh, when you place your trust in God, the Bible says no weapon uh, formed against you shall prosper. Uh, the Bible says God uh, is our refuge and strength. Uh, a very present help in trouble. The Bible says, but now that saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, that he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, uh, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, uh, and thou art mine. Uh, when thou passeth uh, through the waters, uh, I will be with thee. Uh, through the rivers, uh, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, uh, neither shall the flame uh, kindle upon thee uh, even those uh, that die in the Lord uh, may look defeated uh, but not counted out uh, for they uh, that wait upon the Lord uh, shall renew their strength uh, they shall mount up on wings as eagles uh, they shall run uh, and not be weary uh, they shall walk uh, and not faint uh, in this world you're going to have to go through something there's some people here that know that your enemies tried uh, but they couldn't triumph over you uh, because God favored you. Uh, they whispered. Uh, they conspired. Uh, they told their lies. Uh, but God favored you. Uh, they attacked your character, your integrity, your faith in God. Uh, but he favored you. Uh, and now you can speak life, uh, speak prosperity, and speak health because he favored you. Is there anybody here experiencing the favor of God? Uh, Jesus was homeless. Uh, he left home in glory to come and put, take off his priestly robes, showed up as a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. He was poor and lowly, but through his entire journey, he stayed faithful to God. He looked defeated on the cross. He was captured by soldiers, dragged before the courts. He was beaten and broken, battered and bruised. He was away from home, but he kept his mind fixed on glory. He now can turn Turn uh, your pain into purpose, uh, your cancer into remission, your diabetes he can put on hold. And some of you know uh, that of hard conditions, he's not just a way maker. We said this the other day. He's also a pacemaker. Uh, he's your deliverer. Uh, he's your friend. Uh, he's your confidant, uh, your redeemer, and he is your comforter. Don't give up on yourself. Uh, he's not through with you yet. Oh, does anybody here know that God is still able to do exceedingly uh, abundantly above all that you ask or think does anybody here know that eyes have not seen uh, and ears have not heard uh, neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has done for them let not your heart be troubled uh, ye believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you I go uh, to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also let the redeemed of the Lord say amen let the redeemed of the Lord say praise the Lord oh, if you believe God is coming to take you home uh, put your hands together shout to Jesus I've been redeemed I've been redeemed I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, my God. Amen. I ask that you stand for our closing hymn. Oh, how I love Jesus. 248. Oh, how I love Jesus.
Amen, Amen church? Amen. Is God able today? Yes. We serve a mighty God. Just before I close, someone has left their keys in a bike downstairs. Has a Jamaican flag on it. <laughs> Pastor decided to give it to me. He can come see me. Let us pray to close. Kind, eternal, and righteous Father. We are grateful this afternoon, O oh Lord, that we serve a mighty God who is able. We serve a God who is our provider and a God who is ready, willing to lead us into his kingdom. As we've heard your words today, O oh Lord, may our hearts continue to burn within us until we've made that decision to go home with you. May our hearts continue to burn within us from this word, O oh Lord, until we've made our lives right with you. And so, O oh Lord, as we leave this place, may you never leave our presence. May you always uh, fill us, fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit. And may on that great day, O oh Lord, may we go home to live and reign with you. Recognizing, O oh Lord, that we are your people, and the sheep of your pastor. We thank you for your word today, and we pray your blessings upon this people. In Jesus' name, let God's people say, Amen. Amen. May his peace be with you until we meet again.
God bless you, friends. We are so thankful that you joined us.